and welcome to a massive edition of AEW Dark. I am Excalibur, joined as always by the Olympic bronze medalist Anthony Agogo and the ray of sunshine that is Taz. You know, I'm not usually in a great mood here, ever. But I will say this episode, I'm excited because the FTW World Champion, the machine Brian Cage, will be in action. He will be in action tonight, and he will be in action tomorrow night on Dynamite. Yeah. But that's a story for another time. Let's not waste any more and get down to Justin Roberts, who's standing by inside the ring. Justin Roberts standing by. This contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Columbia, South Carolina, weighing 214 pounds, John Skyler. Great to see John Skyler back in singles action here on AEW Dark. Had a pretty serious knee injury last summer, though. He's recovered, and he said that 2021 is going to be his year. But Taz, I think somebody might have something else to say about that. Oh, yeah, that someone will be out here in about three seconds. That and countdown was actually his opponent. Being accompanied to the ring by Hook from Chico, California, weighing 272 pounds, the machine, Brian Cage. Of course, the machine, Brian Cage, and Ricky Starks will take on Darby Allen and Sting in a street fight on Sunday, March 7th at Revolution on pay per view. But tomorrow night, 8, 7 Central on TNT, Starks and Cage will team up ahead of Revolution to take on the Varsity Blondes, Taz. I can't wait to see the Varsity Blondes turn into Varsity Red, because it's going to be a head, it's going to be full of blood. Going to get their asses kicked by Starks and Cage, as you see Skyler just got run over by the machine. Powerful shoulder tackle there by Cage. Great anticipation there by John Skyler, thrust kick to the jaw. Anthony, Cage was rattled, oh, rattled for a second. Well, for a second, but you can't keep bad men down. And that, ooh, that's exactly what Brian Cage is a bad. Oh, 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 discus lariat. And he really swung for the fences on that one. Yeah, and this is, uh, well, basically, shades of this past week's dynamite right here. Oh! People know what I'm talking about. That was impressive, the power of the machine. John Schuyler planted in the center of the ring. 2020 isn't looking so good for John Schuyler as he's up in the drill claw, just planted him. Cover, two, three. There is your winner, the machine, Brian King. Gotta understand something, men. We, Team Taz, are locked and loaded for that street fight against Sting. And if Tommy Allen even exists anymore, that it's just the beginning of the beatdown. Sunday, March 7th, live on pay-per-view AEW Revolution. As we take another look at Brian Cage and his ruthless efficiency. That drill claw dead center of the ring and the night for John Schuyler. Yeah, that's it. Don't matter how hard Schuyler worked to come back from that knee injury. He's going back to South Kakalaki. Damn near in a body bag. Here's Thanks for the machine. machine. Brian Cage, Ricky Starks tomorrow night, 8, 7 Central on TNT in Tag Team Action on Dynamite. Check this out. What's coming up should be a real good match. One-on-one, -on -one, Sir Pentago against Lee Johnson. This contest is set for one fall with a 20-minute time limit. Introducing first, he is accompanied to the ring by Luther from San Juan, Puerto Rico, weighing 175 pounds, Sir Pentico. Taz, I, I know that you've kind of walked, walked the path alone in your career for the most part. Yes. But if you could choose one person to have in your corner during your career, would it have been Luther or Arn Anderson? I would probably like, think maybe, uh, yeah, yeah, on end. Oh, okay. uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing against Luther. No, no, no. But he's just, I don't know if Luther is the right guy to give you, like, career decisions or choices. He's sure. insane. He's nuts. And his opponent to be accompanied to the ring by the enforcer, Arn Anderson, from Atlanta, Georgia, weighing 180 pounds. 
Big Shotty Lee Johnson. Oh, you can see it already. Lee Johnson's already got the attitude. Typical nightmare family stuff. On Anderson, Cody Rose. All they do is teach people to have an ego and an attitude. Anthony, I understand that uh, you lost a bet recently to the now uh, uh, the formerly winless, but now had notch in the column, Lee Johnson. Oh, I yeah. want to hear this. I want to hear this. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Lee Johnson, listen, we've talked about this in the past, guys. Of winning, winning has come to habit. Lee Johnson, he won the walk-off against Peter Avalon. He got his first win recently on Dynamite against Avalon and Benoni, and he beat me in a bet. So fair play to the boys. Fair play to the boys. Yes. Lee Johnson can't stop winning, Taz. I don't know about that. Well, I guess, yeah, he's on a little bit of a roll. I just don't want to give him credit. I, I'm trying to be, you know, even Stephen Jones. Well, but, you know, it's just the whole Nightmare for Cody. Yeah, you know, famously uh, a little bit of bad blood between Team bit. Taz and the Nightmare family. Yeah, exactly. And it's always, I think, going to be that bad blood. But, look, there's no doubting Lee Johnson is a tremendous young athlete. I think his upside is insane. He's, he's on the cusp of being a major star in this company down the road. I really believe that. Hammerlock reversed there by Serpentico. Nice uh Little switch right there and uh, went for the pick of the oh, look at that. back of the knee, but didn't work. Went for a single, that didn't work. Lee sure Johnson being sent into the ropes, showing off his agility oh. there. Nice drop step behind. Lee Johnson showing off his speed. Leap frog goes for the trip. Serpentico able to avoid, but a beautiful drop kick. Anthony, I think you felt that a time or two. I have. I've walked in that the odd time. He's got so much talent, Lee Johnson. So much talent in abundance. Wow. And, and strength. Wow, look at this. Wow, you don't. Hoisting up Serpentico. Wrestling, old school. Covered here, hooks the far leg. Two, two like counts. Watching a Lex Luger match. Well, you know, importantly, Taz, uh, Lee Johnson says that one of his biggest influences in pro wrestling is Big Daddy Shirley Crabtree. Oh. <laughs> and you can really see it. Oh! Wow, that was a shot by Serpentico. He's a, he's a true student of the game, is our, is our Lee Johnson. Yeah, but he's, he's 23 years old. He's still a bait. Oh, double leg there. Oh. And now Lee Johnson. It lost school a little yeah. bit, but it works. Not taken too kindly. That slap to the face by Serpentico. I think it's a, you know, I, I, I again, speaking, uh, just being, oh! Uh, being down the middle here, being fair. I, I mean, having someone to the level of an on Anderson from the Nightmare family in the corner of Lee Johnson at this very moment, it's not helping Lee, but. You know, it's definitely a big, big plus for his career, along obviously with the, you know, with the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes in his corner. And I don't, know, I don't know if you guys noticed it, but Arn Anderson is now inching closer towards Lee Johnson. After, after Lee lost his temper, Arn is now trying to, he's getting a little more, more agitated, a little more vocal in his coaching. And he took a nasty knee to the head a minute ago, Lee Johnson from Serpentico. Serpentico able to avoid all the contact there. Oh, ho, ho! Wow. Thrust kicked a low DDT. He just spiked Lee Johnson. Serpentico floats over to no. That was some shot to the jaw. I mean, it's shown you how tough Lee Johnson's jaw is. Cover again. No. Lee Johnson's win streak almost ended. I was saying a minute ago, Lee Johnson, he's only 23 years old, and as we all know in this industry, you don't get your true man strength until you hit your mid-20s. So when Lee does get that man strength, as we say in boxing, he's going to be a real player, a real big player in this in this industry. And when he gets to his mid-20s, he'll be able to rent a car. Or something something I think you can't now, do, I, I heard. I, I, <laughs> that yeah. Side Joe Jones. Yeah. All right, here we go. <laughs> Serpentico <laughs> elevated oh. over the top. And Zikiri, and oh, grabbing that. Handful of hair by Lee Johnson and the stomp, but he came down on the ribs. It wasn't even in the center of the chest. Ah, uh, total of ribs. By the way, I think he can rent the car in the U.S. at 21. One, two, you get better rates at 25. That's true, but 21's the, the gimmick name is. Okay. Not if you've got a, a British, British driver, I was going to say that. <laughs> you have know, experience. You, 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 this, you, this is you, awfully you, specific commentary here on Dark. I wonder why we'd be talking about this. you got to get an Uber, son. <laughs> So yeah. Redico backing Lee Johnson into the ropes. Irish whip hard into the corner. Lee Johnson dropping down. Serpentico in the driver's seat here. Sure is now. Serpentico's got to try to just keep the pressure on. Stay on Lee right now. Right hand to the midsection. Stops Serpentico in his trap. But uh, Serpentico, a flurry of blows there. Yeah, they, they were more coughing punches and proper, like, you know, destroying punches. But, you know, he's, he's intense. Serpentico, this is a big chance for him. Another hard shot into the corner. The hammer throw by Serpentico. I mean, you know, so let's say Serpentico hypothetically gets the victory here. Is that an upset or not? I'd love both of you men's opinion. Anthony, go first. Well, I think, I think it would be. I think it would be because Lee Johnson, he's got 
No, he's, he's got, as I mentioned a minute ago, so much ability, and right. the Nightmare family are now kind of really drawing that oh, good clothesline, drawing that ability out of it. Two consecutive clotheslines, a third caught by Serpentico, but Johnson hanging neckbreaker there. Big shot, he's springing up to his feet. Lee Johnson feeling it here. Arn Anderson coaching, liking what he's seeing as Lee Johnson. Oh! Whoa! The fisherman's Ushigoroshi and oh, Serpentico kicking out. Wow. Lee Johnson needs to maintain his composure. You can see Arn Anderson outside telling him the exact same thing. Don't get flustered. And that's why it's so important to have a good coach in your corner to settle your nerves down when you do get a bit flustered. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like if you're Lee Johnson, you really got to zone it for the kill, man. Quicker than this. Just my professional opinion. And you had him dead to rights. Yeah, Anthony, as, as you can attest to, sometimes you hit a guy with his be your best shot and he kicks out of it. That, that could be a little deflating, demoralizing. It can be demoralizing, but that's why we need a strong mentality. And. Oh, Lee oh. Johnson, Blue Thunder Bomb! One, two, three! Now, uh, winner of this match. Big Shotty Lee Johnson! Lee Johnson picking up his first AEW singles victory here tonight on Dark. Well, I, yeah, there, there's definitely momentum in, this, you know, in the corner of Lee Johnson. And, and, uh, it's tough to admit, but since he's joined a nightmare, family obviously thinks it's worked well. As you see right here, Blue Thunder Bomb, boom, that's it. Anthony, as you alluded to earlier, once that snowball starts rolling down the hill, it picks up momentum, it picks up size. 100% winning is a habit, as losing is a habit. He's got his first win, his second win. I think it's going to be ahead of a lot more wins for Lee Johnson. Congratulations to Lee Johnson here tonight on Dark. The hard-headed Eddie Kingston takes on the debuting J.D. Drake next here on AEW Dark. This contest is set for one fall with a 20-minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Shelby, North Carolina, weighing 301 pounds, J.D. Drake. Taz, J.D. Drake making his AEW debut here tonight. Somebody with a, a lot of experience, very well traveled, and a very tough competitor. Yeah, definitely tough, tough, uh, tough man from North Kakalaki. I've heard a lot about JD. I'm looking forward to seeing him scrap here. And speaking of scrap, he's dealing with a heavy-duty scrapper from New York right now. Be something else here. And his opponent from Yonkers, New York, weighing 244 pounds, Eddie Kingston. Anthony, when you've got two two guys that like to scrap, that like to, to throw hands and to throw down, you can expect fireworks in the ring. Yeah, of course you can. I think this this fight this fight will be somewhat of a of a barroom brawl. You've got two big bruises ready to go at it. JD Drake not backing down from Eddie Kingston. Strong collar and elbow tie up. That's the key with Kingston. You cannot back down. If he sees that opening, that you are weak-minded or fearful of him, he'll eat you up. And JD showing no fear right now. Early goings. He's a big boy, this JD. Drake, Very big, thick, burly man. Probably ate a couple of biscuits in his day down there in North Carolina. But he moves extremely well, yes. which is one of his uh, his best attributes. But for as well as he moves, he hits even harder as Eddie Kingston just found out. And Kingston just grabs a side headlock. That's, isn't one. that's <laughs> rare. Yeah, to your point, X Cop, usually he'll go chop for chop, and Eddie's like, you know what? I'll just grab a headlock. <laughs> Tight headlock, too. I mean, that is a, that is a testament to that, that striking ability Good of point. JD Drake. Good point, for sure. Drake sends Kingston off. Oh! Ho, Chops being exchanged. And. You know, Anthony, it is not often that we see oh. Eddie Kingston getting bested in a striking exchange. No, it's not. I like I like J.D. Drake when he, when he was... Oh, the, went for the, the spinning back fist. Drake at the NZ Gary. Yeah, I like... Um, Cover here, one. When when um, Kingston had the headlock in, in Jake Drake, he tried to push him off. He couldn't do it. He softened up with two big forearms to the midriff. 
to weaken that and uh, weaken that grip, and he's able to get away. So that's very clever work from JD Drake. And we can right hand there too. So we can see from the, uh, the, I mean, the limited exchange thus far. Oh, boot to the side. Look at the chest of JD Drake. It is bright red. I mean, well, half of the North Carolina flag is red. <laughs> so it's almost like part of his body is red and white, like the North Carolina flag, minus the blue on the side. Look at that. That's like raw meat right there, my friends. Yeah, he has been tenderized by Eddie Kingston and kicks his boot to the kidneys. Well, you didn't need that part of the kidney anymore. <laughs> I'll just stop He's got, it he's got another one. Yeah, exactly. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> popped right in the eye, man. And that was a that was a rough one to the eye. That was you saw the back of the head of JD. Hey, listen, look, Eddie Kings is a Yonkers guy. He's from up there. Look, I, I know that area well. Excalibur, I know you know that area well, too. Upstate. Ups yeah, that's what we joke around about, but he's a tough dude, and that's a tough area. A good chunk of Yonkers is a tough area, so that's a nice headbutt, too. I wouldn't want a headbutt. J.D. Drake, he's got one of those big heads. His head is like a like a heavy bag. He's got a head right. like a stop sign. Look at a head like a cabbage. Oh, but look at this. Those digging shots to the midsection, and now just clubbing strikes and... Kingston, once again, showing that he does not really want to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Drake. Shock coming in, my friend. Oh, man, what a shot. And, the, oh, but oh. J.D. up to his feet. J.D.'s tough, man. Oh, again, Kingston dropping him with that headbutt. This is some dirty fighting, Anthony. This is, this is physicality at, at its finest. This is, um, it's, as we thought at the beginning, two big, burly men having this out with each other. Well, both athletes have a mean streak in them. They're, you know, a lot of pride for both. So right now, Kingston definitely getting the better of J.D. Drake. Kingston up to the middle rope, going for the diving oh. shoulder tackle, but a right hand across the jaw. Well, nobody could break down a right hand better than the guy to your right in Anthony, so I'll let him take that. <laughs> he beats through that perfectly. Just think, a knockout punch, yes, his speed, yes, his power, but it's also timing, and he timed that to perfection. Orinage sets Kingston down. Oh, look at this. J.D. Drake up to the middle. The Vader bomb. Puts the far leg. Whoa, we were on the verge of an upset here. Yeah, Eddie, you can see Eddie's eyes. You don't know what hit him. That Vader bomb hit its mark. Well, he's still waking up from that right hand across the jaw. Yeah, th th that would knock out most people. Eddie Kingston, we all know, he's used to being in fights, and he's that's why he's recovered so quickly oh. from that big right hand. I think Eddie might have in mind. Maybe going for a, I thought he was going for a suplex. I think he was just holding on to have to clear his head. It might have been well, the slap palm strike right to the face. You saw it. J.D. Drake very unsteady on his Oh, elevating up and over Kingston. That's the agility I was talking about. Coming in, the high boot drops Kingston. J.D. Drake is looking great here in his AEW debut. Eddie Kingston in the corner. J.D. Kingston oh, 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 oh. all set on. That is a lot of weight coming at you. Maybe Kingston's taking him uh, is underestimated. Jay's in trouble. He's in trouble. Oh, the moon salt press. Nobody home. Kingston up the Oregon. Oh. The spinning back fist. That's it. One, two, three. Oh. What's a match? The uh, winner of this match, Eddie Kingston. That was intense and that was physical. But at the end of the day, it was a victory for that man, Eddie Kingston. Yeah, Eddie, listen, Eddie brought those chops, he brought the physicality at the end of the day. He got the Duke, you know, with the experience advantage and the intensity right there. Missing that moonsault was, well, that was it. Once that happened, Ooh. Eddie capitalized. That was something else there. Yeah. Anthony, Ooh. there's not many men that can stand toe to toe with Eddie Kingston. No, there's not. But J.D. Right. Drake proved he's one of them. He's well, well, until the last strike, he, he did well. He hung on in there, but that back fist knocks out most people and it knocked out J.D. Drake tonight. We got ladies action coming up right now. The young Brooke Havoc with Cody Rhodes. Yes, Cody Rhodes in her corner against Layla Hirsch. This contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit to be accompanied to the ring by Cody Rhodes from San Jose, California, Brooke Havoc. Brooke Havoc, one of the standout graduates of the Nightmare Factory in Atlanta, Georgia, Cody Rhodes. Very proud of his student. 
Brooke Havoc. Well, it should be. Uh, she's uh, uh, we've seen a little bit out of Brooke. She's impressive. Cody's annoying. And her opponent, originally from Moscow, Russia, legit Layla. Legit Layla Hirsch returning to action here tonight. She had a disappointing exit in the first round of the Women's Eliminator Tournament, Women's World Championship Eliminator Tournament, but Taz, she had a tough draw on Thunder Rosa. Yeah, very, very tough draw for sure. No shame in that competing against Thunder Rosa. This right here, Brooke Havoc, you know, she's got, she's very inexperienced. That's well documented already for this young lady. And it's, it, it, it's tough goings against someone like Layla Hirsch. Yeah, Layla Hirsch. As, as we have mentioned before, a uh, standout amateur wrestling competitor in New Jersey. She's got a, she was, she was an all-state folk style wrestler, Taz. I mean, that is, that's tough. Yeah, no, it's not, that's very impressive, no doubt. Quick go behind there by Brooke. Ooh, Brooke explodes in. The Tierras takes down Layla Hirsch. Brooke Havoc coming in, flipping neck breaker. Wow, this is, oh, what, one, two. That's smart by Brooke Havoc. Go after her right away. Go in, go in real quick. Attack quick if you can. And she probably learned that from Cody. I'm sure that's a smart way to go about a match. But Layla Hirsch immediately shutting down Brooke Havoc. That, that big shot. And now the delayed vertical suplex. Great power yeah, shown by job. Layla Hirsch. Very good by Hirsch. Looks the inside leg. Brooke Havoc kicking out. People don't realize when you get delayed in the air like that, the blood literally rushes to your head and you lose your equilibrium a little bit, and then you get dumped on your back. It, it sucks. Oh, God, that sucks even more. And then when all the blood comes rushing back out to your extremities, it's, it's very disorienting. No doubt. Oh, but Brooke oh. Havoc. Very quick. She has a, a quick first step, goes for the Casadora. goes around the back, one, two, no. Very nimble, Brooke Havoc. Very flexible and nimble, what she just did right there. Just a two count there. Havoc uh, flipping neckbreaker over the top. Layla, though, counters. Nice counter by Hirsch right there. Very good counter. Yeah, Brooke Havoc being sent into the corner by Layla Hirsch. Back elbow that drops Layla. Brooke headed up to the top. She's quick, Havoc. She's quick. Oh, went for the splash, but Layla just sidestepped it, sending Brooke Havoc crashing. Roll up here. Got the leg hook. Havoc kicks out. Look, obviously, you know, a younger athlete like Brooke Havoc, she's she's trying a lot of stuff, but I respect it. She went for the the Tierras, the head scissors once again, but Layla using her. Oh Oof. man, what a suplex there by Layla yeah, that, Hirsch. That German suplex will definitely light you up. Big Beal coming here. Oh, into, into that, the into that Juju Katami, that cross arm breaker, and immediately Havoc taps out. The winner of this match, legit Layla Hirsch. It was smart, believe it or not, uh, for Brooke Havoc to tap out as quick as she did. With that arm, that arm bar, that Juju Katami can tear apart a bicep, a shoulder real quick. There's no shame in tapping when your opponent gets you that quick. So I think young Brooke Havoc did a good job. She'll learn from this, and Cody will teach her from this. Taz, what about the resilience? What about the uh, the ability for Layla Hirsch to bounce back? I mean, that, that was a heartbreaking loss to Thunder Rosa, but. She did not look phased in the least here tonight. No, no, not at all. She looked motivated more than anything than Layla Hirsch. So, excellent job by her. Legit Layla Hirsch, your winner here tonight on Dark. Last Monday, the AEW Women's World Championship Eliminator Tournament rolled on. In round one action, Ty Conte pushed the native beast Nyla Rose to the limit. But in the end, the former AEW Women's World Champion was able to move on. Inside the ring, the beast bomb! Dr. Britt Baker was able to finish off Maddie Wrenkowski. The lock shot! On the Japan side of the bracket, Yuka Sakazaki defeated Emi Sakura to move on to the finals. Crucifix here, one, two, three! Yuka Sakazaki! And we saw Ryo Mizunami defeat Aja Kong to secure her spot in the finals. The leg drop on the back of Kong's head! The referee's at nine! Taz, I can't believe what we just saw! This Sunday on Bleacher Report at 7 o'clock Eastern, we'll have a loaded night of tournament action. Don't miss a six-women tag match as Ikaru Shida, Mei Segura, and Rin Karukura team up to face off with Imi Sakura, Vinny, and Maki Ito. Yuka Sakazaki and Ryo Mizunami will battle in the Japan Finals. And in our main event, 
Thunder Rosa and Rio will clash in semifinal action on the U.S. side of the bracket. Jurassic Express, Jungle Boy, and Luchasaurus will be in tag team action next here on AEW Dark. Oh, yeah! My jam, bro. Oh, this isn't your ring music. <laughs> I've talked to Jungle Boy about this. This is a tag team match set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Introducing first at a combined weight of 443 pounds, Jungle Boy, Luchasaurus, Jurassic Express. Uh, Jurassic uh, Express, number two ranked here in the AEW Tag Team Division. Gun Club back to the fool. Shocking. Great song. Anthony, you got this over in England? Yeah, yeah, we've, we've, we've got music. <laughs> You got music. Yeah, how did the Beatles test? Yeah, a couple of musicians came out of uh, Stones. Yeah, 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 yeah. If, you, Zeppelin. if you guys would let Justin Roberts do his job here, why? At a combined oh. weight of 386 pounds, the team of Angel Fashion and BSK. Great song, bro. Jungle Life, bro. Talking about uh, like things that transfer to the UK. Jungle Boy is a huge, huge star over in, in the UK. He really is. I mean. Um, yeah, no, he's yeah. got that crossover appeal, hasn't he? He most certainly does. And in eight days' time, it will be Jurassic Express, Luchasaurus, Jungle Boy, and Marco Stunt versus FTR and Tully Whoa. Blanchard, believe it or not. Wow. Interesting. A six-man tag team matchup on the March 3rd edition of Dynamite. Also that same night, Shaquille O'Neal, Shaq, and Jade Cargill will team up to take on Cody Rhodes and Red Velvet is on March 3rd edition of AEW Dynamite. Jungle Boy looking impressive here in the early going. Yeah, Luchasaurus just tagged himself in. <laughs> Damn, that was tough, right into that German suplex. Taz, how do you prepare for somebody like Luchasaurus? Oh, he's a damn dinosaur that's gigantic. It's tough. I mean, you gotta be, you know, bullocks to deal with him. I think I said that right, bullocks? Anthony, I'm begging you. What about my English English? Uh, I it's mean, translate from bollocks. Task, task English. I mean, yeah, Dude, I mean you mean bollocks. Bollocks, yeah. but that doesn't really fit. Does, yeah. All right. oh, 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 tell you what, he's bollocks. He's bollocks right now. That's what he is. Angel VSK's jaw fits and then, whoa, he, Angel, Angel he, Fashion just got sandwiched by a series of kicks. He was trying to double, you know, put his hands up. Jurassic Express wrestling with intensity with purpose oh. here tonight. The power bomb combo ends the night. Oh, it is with this match. Jurassic Express. Oh, 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 oh. Sorry. Uh, I was going to say, I barely got to plug Dynamite coming up in eight days' time. Oh, you'll get it in. When Jurassic Express will join forces to take on FTR. And I can't believe I'm saying this. Tully Blanchard will be returning to action. It's crazy. Imagine that happens to Tully Blanchard. Need a splash though to get him out of the ring. But he's in great shape. He's, he's in fantastic shape, but I think that would really put a dent in Tully Blanchard's golf game. <laughs> Jurassic Express victorious here tonight on a collision course with FTR. Oh! All right, guys, here we go. I can't wait to see it. Oh my gosh, Chris, you've completely outdone yourself. But dead ass, yo, how is this even possible? I mean, look at the craftsmanship. It's so beautiful. Look how it turned out. It's absolutely exquisite. Drink with the Demo God drinks. A little bit of the bubbly is back, baby. Supplies are limited. Go to littlebitofthebubbly.com and order now. Get it before it's gone, because last year sold out. Viva el vino brioso! Yay! 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 We got QT Marshall coming up next with Nick Camarado in his corner. This should be good. This bout is set for one fall with a 20-minute time limit. 
to be accompanied to the ring by Nick Camarado from the Big Apple, weighing 234 pounds, Q.T. Marshall. Bulldog! Oof, 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 oof. One half of the Natural Nightmares flying solo here tonight, Q.T. Marshall. Marshall, by the way, right? Anthony, that's your trainer, your sensei. My trainer, one half of the Natural Nightmares and also one half of the best training duo, duo QT Marshall, and Cody Rhodes in the world. And his opponent from Boone, Iowa, weighing 190 pounds, CJ Garrett. <laughs> yeah, my man. <laughs> Not lacking for confidence. He's maximizing his minutes. No, I, I know QT. That would have pissed him off. Well, but JJ went for a, yeah, went for a single leg or an ankle pick there, and, and, and QT not oh. really happened. But uh, JJ, Ooh, JJ uh, creating some distance. Slippery little fellow, isn't he? Yeah. Just keeping a low base, but went for a little high crotch right there. Nice sprawl by QT Marshall. And that is that uh, that technical ability you were speaking of, Anthony. Yeah, QT, I mean, we've discussed it in the past anyway. Like, he can do all the moves, <laughs> stuff like that. You know, he's very adept in every facet of professional wrestling. No, he really is, and, and he's underrated for that. And I know, I think it was a Phoenix Splash, Excalibur, my partner here, made fun of QT recently on Dark, didn't you? And I think QT was upset over that, and I think he put something on social media. Am I not correct? He, he did. QT Marshall did. Uh, I feel like you owe him an apology. I mean, I know that's conduct unbecoming for you, but I really do. I, I apologize to QT Marshall, but I would say if he had any guts, he'd do a Phoenix Splash in this match. Oh, oh, oh look yeah. at that shoulder tackle. And he nothing. stepped through it, too. I got nothing for that one. <laughs> stiff. <laughs> Whoa, watch out. Leapfrog here by Garrett. Leapfrog by QT. Deep arm drag, and he hung on. QT the Dragon Marshall. I thought. <laughs> that was a nice arm drag. And there's Nick Camarado. Yeah, you got to be a little nuts when you hang out with a guy like Camarado. You know Camarado well, right? Oh, uh, yeah, well, let's, again, I, I know him well. He, he's an odd dude. He, yes. They call him Freak Beast. He's every bit a freak and every bit a beast. Yes, yes, I agree. Tremendous power lifter is Nick Camarado. What? But right now, JJ Garrett finding oh, out the gosh. power of QT Marshall, that back elbow. You can see rattled. Nice snap Garrett. that reversal as well, wasn't it, Taz? Nice yeah, snap. very much so. Yeah, a good quick feet by QT. Look at this now, delayed, possible delayed vertical super. Oh, Garrett trying to fight his way out of it, but QT driving him down. JJ Garrett in, in trouble here. Taz. Did you know that J.J. Garrett and uh, Brian Pillman Jr. had a mullet off backstage? Uh, that doesn't shock. Uh, whoa! <laughs> that German oh. suplex. It's the same hair. It's the same mullet, damaged hair um, as Pillman. Damage, spit ends. Uh, has been in the fashion since 82. Right. Oh! Right. That back elbow doesn't go out of fashion ever. No, that was nice. Snapping elbow across the back. QT kicking out, barely at one. That was 10, reckon you know it. Well, I'll tell you what. JJ getting a little cocky over here. Yeah, he talked to the ref and he was looking the wrong way. The ref was behind him. Not lacking confidence. Frog Splash off the bottom rope. Again, just a one count. Was he not talking to the referee, but the referee was behind him? Was he yeah, the he other was. way? He, he was, was looking the wrong way. I was just told recently, I was talking to a friend of mine, that mullets are very confusing. What's so confusing about that? Oh, just confusing, I see. That was some chop. I mean, that by QT. Oh! Oh, big right hand. He's got great strikes. Sure does. He's the one person in the Nightmare Factory have not got a two. But Garrett just rocked him with a rolling elbow strike and a spear in the corner. Yeah, he caught QT pretty good with that. And oh, the cannonball sent on. You know, actually, JJ Garrett walked into this match with a full head of hair, but Tony. Tony Khan saw him backstage and he said, shave your sideburns. And that's how Garrett shaved it. Oh. Do you know what? This guy, he's not a bad lad. He's very, very, very good. Two? That Im almost implosion type senton there. Very nearly picked up what would have been a huge upset victory here for JJ Garrett. He's a bit cocky for my liking coming in against the great QT Marshall on his day. He's been a bit cocky, but he can back it up. He's a good, good wrestler. The great QT Marshall. The great. <laughs> QT well, Marshall. 
Uh, I mean, look, you got, the, you got the great Kabuki, the great Sasuke, and the great QT Marshall. And the great Muta, but I think. Oh, okay. You're going to learn one day, Jeff. You're going to learn. Hey, I, I love QT. Me. I'm not the one who buried him. I, ex, ex oh. Calvert did. Oh! oh. 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 That looks familiar to wow. something I've seen recently without saying wow. what I've seen. Yeah. Pop-up forearm from QT Marshall. And he's got Garrett center of the ring. Diamond cutter! Directly from DDP. One, two, three. No winner of this match. Q T Marshall. He does that? I'll tell you, he does that cutter just like Page did. I mean, that, that's who you know coached him up on it. Very impressive, right there. He gets, yep. he gets that cravat, the, the cravat grip. Yep. He drives that head down to the mat. Yeah, he, he laid out full horizontal extension on the body of Q T Marshall. Picture perfect diamond cutter there for the Nightmare Factory Zone. Q T. Marshall. Super kick, Pate! This is the story of Matt and Nick Jackson, seen through their eyes. Over the past 20 years, they have documented their tireless journey, their triumphs, and their tribulations. And now they are ready to share their adventures with the world in their new book. One day, let's grow up and let's be professional wrestlers. This is the story of two brothers that became two loving fathers that went on to become the best tag team in professional wrestling today. This is the story of the Young Bucks killing the business. Young Bucks, we're killing the business. One half of the acclaimed Platinum Max Caster goes one on one with Marco Stunt of Jurassic Express next here on AEW Dark. The following contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching a ring from Olive Branch, Mississippi, weighing 120 pounds, Marco Stunt. Taz, how can we sing along with Jungle Boy's music but not Marco's? Well, there's no lyrics. That's number one. Okay. Uh, to be frank, it's not as catchy. You don't always sing along with the uh, the lyrics, though. Sometimes you sing along with the music. You hum along. Say, bad out of Taz, your guy. Oh, love the acclaim. Hey. Yo. Yo. Hey, yo. 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 Platinum Max, I spit hot fire. Wait, who left Jungle Boy in the dryer? <laughs> ah! Hold up, it's just Marco. I got the red beam on him like a barcode. Hey, yo, we killing the game. Me and Anthony, we got that flame. Yo, it's like we won already. Look, it's Donnie from the Wild Thornberries. Boo, Marco, boo! AEW! The acclaimed have arrived! I guess Justin's not gonna intro him. We just got Platinum Max Caster taking on Marco Stunt here tonight on AEW Dark. You know, I think Justin doesn't want a uh, diss track written about him by Max Castor. That's probably what it is. Well, Castor will do that. He will roast you. Take him forever here to get the zero. He's like, he's like the, like the honky tonk, a one man Friars Club. We got a wild Thornberries reference from uh, Max Castor. I'm liking that. Take me back to my nostalgic school days. I have no idea who that was when he mentioned it. I gotta be honest with you. Oh, you, know, you don't ever know. He wrestled Big Daddy, Wild Thornberry. <laughs> Welcome back, Cartel. I remember that, old school. Oh, big size difference here. Castor yes. is gigantic hey, next to Marco Stunt. Yeah. That's real easy. Oh, yeah. Break his arm. Oh, Marco Stunt, though, rolling through. Yeah. You can't look past Marco. He's very crafty in there. I mean, he's been, you know, he's been bullied. He's been fighting uh, bigger opponents his entire life. Correct. And Correct. Kind of reminiscent of uh, somebody else I know here in AEW. Darby Allen. True, true. Who's disappeared thanks to my crew. Darby Allen, who, of course, will be teaming up with Sting. If he makes it. On March 7th on pay-per-view. Take on Brian Cage and Ricky Starks in the street fight. Saw last week on Dark that uh, K 
Cage laid out Sting with that huge power bomb. It's not dynamite. Oh. It's not dynamite, sir. But it was awesome. Please. Pardon me. Cover here. Caster kicking out. Uh, one, barely one. Not this cold with Brace Loaf. Hit him so hard. Marco Stunt climbing to the top. Diving across the Oh, Anthony, the strength of Max Caster on display. Oh, yeah, no. he, he caught him like he's his daddy. Um, oh, listen, it's been, a, it's been a great opening start for Marco Stunt. He's a tough, tough kid. He's got we heart. Talk, we talk about his lack of size, but what he lacks in size, he makes up for in heart. You're right, Taz. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, 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 oh. That'll knock the heart out of you. Yeah, that's a hard landing right there. You can see the pain that stunts him. But Excalibur, you make a really good point. You know, his whole career, you know, Marco's been dealing with getting bullied and you know, beat up by bigger guys. He's tenacious, he's tough, he's got heart, he's resilient. And Marco stunt, of course, in uh, Dynamite on March 3rd, that extra special Dynamite. We'll be teaming up with Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus to take on FTR and the returning Tully Blanchard. That's, it's, it's crazy. It blows yeah, my mind. Yeah. It's wild. I'm, I'm excited to see what happens, but I think we'll be busy on that show, meaning Team Taz. Oh, 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 God. And that's, you know, it's it's doubly tough for Marco to overcome the size advantage of Caster when Caster's you know, pulling hair and he's, he's doing these under, underhanded things. Dastardly, dastardly acts well, Max Caster. Yeah, Caster doesn't, you know, he's not going to play by the rules. That's just how he goes. And, and I, think that's, I think that's why the thing's been so successful. You don't take no prisons, they don't play games. He called himself the best wrestler alive. And he should feel like that, Caster. He should feel like he's the best wrestler alive. You have to be that confident. You have to be. Allow me to make a, a boxing reference, chaps. Like, with, with, uh, with Marco Stein, yes, he's smaller. Every person he wrestles is bigger than him. It's like an orthodox boxer boxing a southpaw boxer. Oh. Mark. Oh! oh, 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 oh. Most of the time, you fight uh, orthodox, you fight... Oh, oh Marco with the roll up here. Two, no! Very nearly stole one from Caster. Southpaws have the advantage against orthodox fighters because they fight them most of the time. Running, shooting, star, pressing. That's impressive for, for Marco. Um, it's yeah, and then orthodox guys fighting southpaws, it's, it's awkward for them. So what I'm saying is Max, Ca Max Caster really fights people much, much smaller. Then oh, Marco Stunt. Marco Stunt used to find guys much bigger than him. Just saw a boombox. The boombox. Oh, oh, wow. What a leap there by Max Caster. Marco Stunt brought in the hard way. The, the distraction there caused Marco to stall up on the top rope, and Max Caster made the most of it. What athleticism that was. Amazing. And Platinum Max Caster Whoa. drops the oh. elbow across the chest. One, two. Three. Now the winner of this match, Max Caster. That, that is off-putting. Yeah, he does the hand licking a lot. It's in, uh, you know, see Bowen say, no, nah, that's good. I don't know if I'm going to do that's okay. Uh, he does that. It's very interesting. Uh, it's disturbing, but that's Caster. He does different things. He's an odd person. Platinum Max Caster picking up a victory here tonight. That's Superplex was the beginning of the end. The elbow drop was the end of the end for Marco Stunt. Max Caster, Anthony Bowens. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. That's funny. Air guitar with a boom box. No, 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 no. We didn't even really get to touch on you and Sean Spears. How's your back? It's a little bit sore. Oh my God. <laughs> What's up? I want to talk about wrestling with the week. Whatever we have interest in, we're going to chop it up. Did you get the PS5? Ugh. I'm over here all weekend playing PS4 like a heathen. <laughs> Scorpio Sky and myself, James Willems, we got distracted. We're going to be talking about video games. We're going to be talking about pop culture. Have you seen the New York Subway Rat Man? What? <laughs> We're going to be recapping AEW. It's the most exciting part of the show. <laughs> We're basically going to be talking about the week. We got a lot to get into, man. It's also what the people want to see. <laughs> oh my God. Voila. This is progress. Scorpio Sky, James Willems, Wrestling with the Week. Wrestling with the Week. It's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> Make sure you subscribe now. Woo. It's beautiful. I love it.
The Dark Orders, John Silver and Alex Reynolds in tag team action coming up next. Join the Dark Order. This is a tag team bout set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Introducing at a combined weight of 374 pounds, Alex Reynolds and Sean Silver. The Dark Order, Silver and Reynolds in tag team action here tonight. You see negative one. Yeah, negative one you saw a moment ago. On the shoulders of 10. New mask, by the way, for the leader of the Dark Order, negative one. That's a new mask. Yeah, got the negative one on there. Silver Reynolds, Ridley Go. And their opponents at a combined weight of 362 pounds, a team of Louis Valley and Chris Peaks. Chris Peaks, Louis Valley making their AEW tag team debut, but. <laughs> but uh, apparently, they, they, uh, uh, they have the same tailor. Oh, uh, Silver and Reynolds? Yes. I was going to say Peaks and Valleys. Oh, all right. Peaks and Valleys? Yeah. Get it? Peaks and Valleys? No, I get it. But you see what I mean? Same tailor. Yeah, but so does Alex Reynolds and John Silver. Yeah, but they didn't say that. Oh, I see. Oh! Peaks? Early advantage here on, on Reynolds. Big uppercuts. Send Reynolds into the rope swing and uh, Miss Reynolds cracks him back. Some uppercuts of his own. Takes off the elbow pad and drops Peaks there. Peaks sent into the ropes. Reynolds nice. hopped into that drop kick. That's a sweet drop kick by Reynolds right there. Well done. Both Silver and Reynolds in the ring. I don't think they get enough credit for how technically sound and, and, and intense and dominant they are always when you see these guys team up, always. They're ex extremely, I mean, have been extremely competent Tag team competitors and the great combination moves like that really underscore it. Peaks able to kick out. But you know, it was, it was once they joined Dark Order, they, they really found their footing. And you know, like some, some guys just need somebody else to bring it out of them. And that's how that motivation. Yeah. And that's exactly what happened with Silver and Reynolds. As Silver, a couple shoulder tackle, takes Peaks down and nuts. Round kick. Whoa. Nasty. John Silver just dropped Peaks. A single big kick. Chuck Norris-esque kick. Okay. Yes. I, 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 it's another one. <laughs> Peaks not happy with this cover. We have not seen Louis Valley in action here yet tonight. Oh! I don't think Louis, oh. Louis, Louis Valley is rushing to get in, but now he's going to get in. Yeah, whether he likes it or not, a boot across the face. Of Reynolds there. You haven't seen Louis Valley since the last time Hobbs and Hook beat him up. Remember that? I do remember that. Team Taz members. That is a good plug. Reynolds fighting his way out of it. Right hand. Oh, man. That's nice. Drop, drop toe, hold. toe hold into the rising knee. That was nice. Uh, Peaks. Louis Valley, though, trying to grab a hold, grab something, but Reynolds. I mean, that's the importance of getting back up to your feet, Taz. Yeah, no, exactly. But right now, Louis Valley. Really brought a strong shoulder to the gut of Reynolds. Now Reynolds firing back. Oh, the eyes of Reynolds being gouged by Louis Valley. And Mike Posey admonishing Valley and Peaks. Double Irish whip into the corner. But why? I don't understand why they're not calling it Peaks and Valley. Saying Peaks name first. Just too infuriating. Up. That's why I do most things. <laughs> oh, 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 oh! Drop! Oh my face! Ooh. I don't know if that was supposed to be a senton or a drop kick, but it was a boot to the face. Yeah, either way, very effective. One, and I think Louis Valley did it. They might have had an upset, a chance at an upset victory there, but I think Reynolds is rocking. He's got to try and get out of that corner and get Silver in this match. Big sledgehammer across the spine. Reynolds making the crawl. Oh! Elbow on oh, the lower back there. And Valley and Peaks looking impressive here in their tag team debut tonight, Taz. Mocking, yes. The Valley is mocking the, the, the silver. Reynolds, great Enzi Geary there. Rock Louis Valley, and now John Silver. 
Whoa! Close line. Taking down both competitors, both opponents, I should say. Yeah, big intensity by Silva. Back body drop. Johnny Hungy's jacked. The meat man. Yes, the meat man. I forgot he's the meat man. Oh, 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 talk about meat man. Oh, oh. German suplex one, shoot. I, I think Silver thought he knocked out Peaks and he very well might have with that common Geary. He hit that German suplex right in front of him. <laughs> Look at that, I mean, Valley's hurting on the bottom rope there. Peaks gets the elbow up into the, oh, another rising kick there from John Silver. Silver with Louis Valley on his back and he's got power here. John Silver carrying both men's weight at the Samoan drop. Super strong right there. John Silver. The super strong silver machine. Hey, hey, watch that gimmick infringement. My friend will get angry. Go up on Boise. You know that. I know. Snowed in, bro. Dark Destroyer just planted Louis Valley. One, two, three. Here are your winners, the team of Alex Reynolds and John Silver. That's a hot hit tag team match. How much did you pay Silver and Reynolds to tune up Louis Valley? <laughs> <laughs> well, I know Silver and Reynolds very well. They're friends of mine. They, uh, you know, and yeah, maybe there was a conversation that had. Could we be seeing a uh, Team Taz Dark Order crossover episode in the future? I've, I've asked you before. Probably not. Oh, okay. oh. Uh, the meat man throws the meat at the man. Oh. There you go. Oh. 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 This Germany. A common Geary was gnarly. But Dark Order Silver and Reynolds victorious here tonight. He's got uncontrollable face spasms, Taz. Yeah, whenever the camera's on him, he can't help it. He goes like a conniption. Those are called conniptions. So he, you know, and he trains at this. He trains in mirrors. I've seen him at gyms all over the New York area and New Jersey at times. He'll just do this. <laughs> Sometimes he does it in a department store window. <laughs> Mobile, Alabama's favorite luchador, Fuego del Sol, in action against the recently wedded Kip Sabian, who of course will have his blushing bride, Penelope Ford, in his corner. This contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. To be accompanied to the ring by Penelope Ford from Goldston, England, weighing 181 pounds, super bad Kip. Sabian. I still can't get that lovely wedding out of my mind. It just ended so rough. Penelope ended up in her own cake. I felt bad for her. This is the first time we're seeing Kip and Penelope since the wedding. In action, I should say. I think the sinister minister did a great job as the master of ceremonies. I know since he for a long time. Okay. Playing out for Justin to do the other intro. Well, he's not speaking. And his opponent from Mobile, Alabama, weighing 165 pounds, Fuego de la Sol. Kip, say, Tess, what? What'd you get Kip and Penelope off their registry? Oh, I, uh, They had a humidor listed, I saw. No, I think, no, I got them a, um, a rubberized with shock absorbers uh, a bed uh, for their bed, for the back of the bed, you know, where your head goes, the headboard. <laughs> yes, I, oh, oh, snap. Yeah, I got them a, with, a, with hydraulics in it and cushions. Uh, it's really thick, thick, thick. I bought it at a shop in, uh, outside of L.A. online. <laughs> a headboard, yeah. That's what I got him. <laughs> yeah. so. so not the human. Not the human, though, no. Oh, great Tierras there by Fuego Del Sol. Fuego popped up. Oof. Rana takes down Kip Sabian. Oh, drop kick. Oh, wow, drop. Fuego yeah. looking impressive here, man. Kip Sabian might be uh, a little bit of a hangover there from the honeymoon. Oh, Kip, he's got, a, he's got a beautiful face, this Kip, and Penelope's checking out her, her man's beautiful face. Knocked his contact out, maybe. He wears actually double contacts in case that happens. <laughs> he told me. That. Oh! <laughs> oh! What a shot. Oh, oh, oh. And see, pointing to those double contacts. Yeah, he wears two pairs because he, you know, he's so physical in the ring. But he, uh, 
one on the front, one on the back. Yeah. That's a new gear. I know that. We've discussed that. No, we haven't actually. No, Kip and I have, not you and I. I see. Unless you got a mouse, you oh, 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 oh. yeah. Stuart Little, of course. Yes. <laughs> Look how smooth he is. He's got, he did uh, some changed his hair up, got some frosting in there. I help him with all this stuff. Yeah. Kip Sabian. Ooh! Stepped into that headbutt, man. Yes, well done. I don't like Greg with those soul. I want to see Kip just pound on him. I keep hearing about this tornado DDT. I've yet to see it. He is uh, the alleged master of the Tornado DDT. Ooh! Came back to the midsection. Oh, oh, man, that was a brutal kick. That will just knot up your inner thigh, hamstring area. That is rough. Nelby Ford watching her husband go to work on Fuego del Sol. Shouldn't she be Penelope Sabian now? Not all women. I want to take their husband's name, Tim. I was 1950 again. Oh, 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 oh. That was a kick and a half. A little uh, kind of, you know, football. Yeah, and, you know, like, when we'd seen Kip months past, he would, uh, you know, he'd really, he would, he would ham it up for the camera after a kick like that, but instead. No, he's all business. Yeah, he is uh, really focused, looking really aggressive here tonight as Kip. Climbing up to the top, Fuego very unsteady inside the ring. Kip rolls through, went for the pump kick. Fuego had it countered. Well, a counter roll here. Whoa, nothing there. Uh oh, whoa. Oh, Fuego countered the Cazador. Uh, Bulldog into his own knee. Moonsault off the middle rope, kick to the side of the head. Fuego del Sol. An opportunity here as he goes around the sling blade. Backbreaker into the flatliner combination. Fuego on ice, one, two, no! Fuego on ice, one of Taz's favorite cocktails. Yeah, Fuego, <laughs> Fuego slipping around out there like he's outside a, a Waffle House in Birmingham on an icy day. So he's actually quite nice in Birmingham right now. I got caught an ice storm in that area once. Well, that was Jonesboro, Arkansas, but I digress. Here we go, oof! You're over there, too. Over everywhere, bro. Watch out. Yep. Oh! Oh, and the big right hand follows it up, and Fuego dropped by that shot. See that mean streak in Kip. Yeah, Kip is, uh, I mean, this is some, some newfound intensity, Taz. We were, we were having a little bit of fun. I like it, though. I think it's good. But, yeah, Kip has been all business. He's got Fuego up on the shoulder. The Deathly Hallows countered there. Kip gets rolled up. Fuego! Very nearly upset Kip Sabian here. And a massive upset. Oh, the kick. He, he kicked out the leg of Fuego. He's got him back up once again. Looking for Deathly Hallows, and he hits it. Ah. Lance Fuego del Sol. One, Get about two, three. Now, winner of this match, super bad. Kip Sabian. Good God. Fuego del Sol landing right on his face. And Kip continuing to talk some stuff to his fallen as opponent as Penelope Ford. I, it's good to see a smile back on her face after how the best friends disrupted the winning. Oh, I But agree. I think they had it coming, though. Who's they? These two? No, yes. I don't. I disagree, but I understand why you would say that. I'm just so happy for Kip and Penelope, both very good friends of mine. I mean, it's really nice that you see Penelope happy again. Kip gets a big victory. Now they're gonna make out right here on YouTube. Oh, saliva, oh, saliva, a little oh, residue. No. A little hangover oh, residue. No. We are gonna have to blur that. Oh, that was so oh. wild. That was, oh, oh boy. Saliva in the oh. city, oh boy. Tag team action coming up next. Sean Dean and Carly Bravo go up against the Varsity Blonde. This is a tag team matchup set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring at a combined weight of 396 pounds, the team of Sean Dean and Carly Bravo. Well, two proud Americans right here. Carly Bravo and Sean Dean, we've seen, uh, seen these guys team up before here on AEW Dark. They've looked impressive, Taz. Uh, definitely have, definitely have. 
and they've got a big opportunity here against one of the hottest up and coming teams here in AEW. And their opponents at a combined weight of 453 pounds, Brian Pillman Jr., Griff Garrison, the varsity blonde. So take a real Look, ladies and gentlemen, at the two young men that got in the ring, the Varsity Blondes, which tomorrow night on Dynamite, they're getting their asses whooped by Brian Cage and Ricky Starks. That's a fat jack. God, I don't envy these two young guys. This is what's going to happen tomorrow night. They are just going to be on that road of destruction for Team Taz. But they're going to be the victors. Taz, not, not to, to contradict you. Yes. But... Varsity Blondes know that know what they're walking into tomorrow night on time. Well, they might know it, but they, they don't realize. They might know, but they don't realize the beating they're going to get. You don't, gonna you don't think beating. Garrison and Pillman are, are, are prepared that they've been... They Pillman's probably not. Garrison, yeah, he probably knows. Pillman doesn't realize. So Carly Bravo and Brian Pillman Jr. starting things off. I want to give a special shout-out to our uh, Spanish announce team. Always working hard. Yes. We had a, a special guest drop by the boot uh, recently, so... Arnavo tie up here. Bravo getting positioned into the corner. Brian Pillman oh, able to avoid contact once again, stepping in to that lockup. Yeah, Call his nice uh, arm drag right there on Pillman. Pillman, careful, don't turn your back now on your opponent. Pil Garrison's like, well, let me tag in, and Pillman's like, no, no, I got it. I respect that out of Brian Pillman. Jr. Taz, I like when uh, what? I like when the crowd chants USA and everybody in the ring, literally everybody in the ring is from the United States. Even Bryce, the referee, from the Philly area, which is still part of the US. As much as you try to, to get them excommunicated. Griff Garrison is <laughs> Tags in. Great tag team synergy here by the Blondes. Could be uh, what Cage and Starks have to look forward to tomorrow night. No, not happening. It's not gonna happen. We have a whole game plan. It's, it took us 10 minutes to go over the game plan, the skull session. It's really that simple. Garrison comes in with the double sledge across the outstretched elbow of Carly Bravo. Bravo sent into the rope swing and a miss there. Oh, the blondes, a bit Ooh. of a meeting in the mines. Or actually, mind. Nice drop kick right there by Carly Bravo. Got a lot of ink, Bravo. A lot of ink. That's tattooing. Yeah, I tried. You got any good times? A couple. Uh, wrist control and snapping that with that arm rigger. Carly Bravo, uh, relative newcomer to the world of pro wrestling, but he's uh, he's got a lot of focus and he's, he's yeah, he is. He does. He, you're right. Really uh, comporting himself well. Bit of a misdirect there on Griff Garrison as the captain, Sean Dean, comes flying in over the top. Leg drop there for Carly Bravo. Sean Dean, cover here, Juan. This is uh, this would be something of an upset, Taz, where uh, Sean Dean and Carly Bravo to pick up the victory here tonight on Dark. Oh, absolutely. I mean, they need any sort of momentum to go against my guys tomorrow night on Dynamite, Stalks, and Cage as we get ready for the big street fight against Sting if Darby Allen shows up to it. Yeah, that street fight between Team Taz and Sting and Darby Allen. Sunday, March 7th on pay-per-view. Fight TV, it is AEW Revolution. Brian Pillman covers here. Nope, Carly Bravo able to kick out. Remember the last time we saw Darby Allen, what he was doing, right? Uh, he was being dragged through the parking lot of Daly's Place in a body bag. Yes, by Team Taz in a beautiful truck. And we took him to uh, FTW World. It's a little redundant. FTW World, World. Yeah. Get it? I get it, World, World. Yeah. That's kind of my thing. Yeah. Yeah, two times, beat and repeat. Tommy, two times. <laughs> Brian Pillman Jr. Oh, big clothesline and the chop follow up to the midsection. Pillman really chopping down Carly Bravo. I will say the Boston Blondes have a really good look. You know, they, they really do. I mean, they, they, you know, they have all the potential in the world, they have a lot of skill. Two young athletes. And I mean, we, we've really, you and I, have had an opportunity to see Garrison and Pillman kind of uh, coalesce right. as a team before our eyes. Right. And that's the key, what you just said. I'm hiding in plain sight. Over here. Because I've sat here and called these two guys matches. I know everything about them. So obviously, 
Cajun stocks know everything about that. I, I, I'm here as an elite color analyst. I'm able to, everybody's game plan here, I see it, I understand everybody's moveset, you understand me? I do understand it, Jess. Well, it's kind of a tough question, you don't have to answer it. Well, sometimes when I don't answer, you get upset. Well, that's annoying. That's why. So, Carly Bravo really getting, uh, oh, oh, no! The golf is nipple! On a, on, a night, on a frigid night like this, that is uh, extra, yeah. Carly Bravo, looking for a hip toss. You can see the steam rising off. Oh, Jesus, God. What is going on here? Purple Nurple City. Oh! And there, Bravo finally gets the hip toss. Drop kick there. What about the fair play? Carly Bravo. He needs to clear over Pillman to get the tag out to Sean Dean. Making the crawl. Pillman identifies it, grabs the leg of Bravo. Going for a, it looks like a single leg crab. Bravo, is he really digging in those hands? He's, uh, he's a couple couple hand lengths away from Sean Dean. Yeah, Pillman's got too much size and power on Bravo. Bravo not, not powerful enough to get across there. And, and Taz, you know, a half crab is a very simple technique, but oh, it's but, nasty. Though. But when yeah, when you're locked in there, I mean, Bravo knows instinctively that he needs to make the tag, but then he's also oh, oh, oh. Garrison. That's the strength of Garrison. Bravo is fighting him, but it's, uh oh. Oh, the blondes. Oh, a little, little problem right there. Colliding with one another. Carly Bravo. Right. USA chain, as you said, popping out here. He makes the tag. Sean Dean drops Garrison. Dodges, hits the NZ Gary. Griff Garrison in a little bit of trouble here as the captain. Oh, man. Colliding with Garrison in the corner. A drop kick. Griff Garrison on roller skates here. The captain goes around the salute to DDT. I get him. One, two, no. Great flurry of offense by the captain. Carly Bravo and Sean Dean are a team that, that they, I mean, they really complement each other so well, just beyond their, their shared military experience. They're, I mean, they, yeah, no, I agree. Thanks. I mean, Carly, Bravo! Standing slice spread there. Sean Dean, the diving body press. Bravo! One, two, no! Pillman, if it were not for his intervention, I think he would have lost. Yeah. yeah. I'll tell you what, Vossi Blondes, they would have picked that game up coming at the Dynamite tomorrow night. Yeah, <laughs> tell you that. Pillman off the middle rope with a drop kick. Carly Bravo, he had his back turned to Pillman. I'm not sure he's, he knew what happened to Sean Dean. Garrison blocks and flattens out Bravo. Griff Garrison. Oh, wow. That was some shot right there. Rolling elbows. Strike there from Griff Garrison. And Carly Bravo. With the Pillman here. Brought up Pillman. The combo there. Brian Pillman. One, two, three. Here are your winners, the Varsity Blondes. Taz, I'm not going to tell you how to do your job, but your boys better be ready for a fight tomorrow on Dynamite. <laughs> you don't have to tell me how to do my job. Ricky Starks and Brian Cage, they're going to do their job. These guys are going to do the job. They're going to get whooped on Dynamite. That's what's going to go down, my man. You don't want to be in that path of rage of anybody in Team Taz right now, especially Cage and Starks. This was, this was impressive. For sure, by Vossi Blondes, there's no doubt about it. No due respect to the young man, Mr. Bravo. That's not Stalks or Cage that you just did that to. Brian Pillman Jr., Griff Garrison will be coming to Dynamite to do battle with Starks and Cage tomorrow night. The Hollywood hunk, Ryan Nemeth, goes one on one with Nightmare Family's Aaron Solo next year on AEW Dark. This contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Introducing first from Hollywood, California, weighing 208 pounds, he is the Hollywood hunk, Brian Nemeth.
That is a, a hell of a jacket there for the Hollywood hunk Ryan Nemeth. Love that jacket. I mean, that's, that's sharp. You think he bought that off the rack? He might have got it on Amazon, to be honest. Or shop AEW.com. Nah, I like Ryan. Nemeth! And his opponent from South San Francisco, California, weighing 175 pounds, Aaron Solo. Aaron Solo, one of the newest members of the Nightmare family. Anthony, a man that I know you've trained with extensively. I love Aaron Solo. He's my guy. Look at him. Woo, look at that pizzazz. My boy, Aaron Solo. And he will be flying solo here tonight against the Hollywood hunk, Ryan Nemeth. Should be a good matchup. I mean, I, I would say that both these men are evenly matched. They're both really good athletes. <clears throat> Similar size. I would, probably Nemeth has a little bit of a size advantage, a little bit. I think pounds. Nemeth with the the experience advantage, but I would say Solo a bitter, uh, a bit more well traveled globally speaking. Yeah. Oh, nice fireman's carry right there. Well done. I told you I was good. But then, yeah, Nemeth, that tremendous folk style wrestling background. Awarding himself one point to us. Well, you're technically correct. It's a really good fireman's. I mean, it's a basic middle school move, but it's well done. It's not like you, uh, you know, just want a gold medal. But I digress. Nice little high crotch into the double leg. Well done, right there. Well, Solo, he's, he's riding a crest of a wave at the moment, as you mentioned, Excalibur. He's just now signed. Just now officially joined the Nightmare family. That is a, a huge opportunity. I mean, it's it's a, a real vote of confidence. We saw. What that does for, uh, or, you know, what that did for Nick Camarado, what you know, what the support of the Nightmare family's done for Lee Johnson. So, you know, Solo, I think, with a lot to, lot to live up to. Gave him a point there with the escape. Come on, Solo, smack this boy. Cocky son of a gun. Who, Aaron Solo? Yeah, I can't stand him. Yeah, he's cocky. Oh, oh no, no. no. Oh, oh, oh. I'm dragged. Arm yeah. Second one. Solo maintaining control of Ryan Nemeth here. I wasn't ready for that. <laughs> Doing his own running commentary, Taz. We can just lay out. Yeah. Go yes. get a team. Well, that's not possible for you. Come on, Nemeth. Come on, back it up out of the corner, boys. Oh. Hey, back it up. All right. Come on, out of the corner. Very impressive physique from the Hollywood hunk, Nemeth. Ryan Nemeth. He's in great shape. He is in great shape. He's got the blonde hair. He dyes his roots black. <laughs> <laughs> so, watch out. Whoa! A little nice roll right there. Good job. But Solo oh, elevates, job, yeah. yeah. Drops Nemeth with a drop <laughs> It's a toss-up in between in the Nightmare family between Lee Johnson now and Solo. Who's got the best drop kick? They've what both is the got deal with this ones. Nightmare family and the, like we were, and the, no, and the factory with QT? Anthy, you, are they giving you guys like Kool-Aid, bro? You guys are all the dark very, order. very supportive of each other. I know that, but it's crazy the love and the love fest that that's what you get from a family or you support each other you build each other up you lift each other up i've had a tough family not not friend. taz and hook i'll tell you no it's not like that diving knee drop there solo lateral press just a one count that's no fun getting a knee driven into your sternum boys and girls at home watching this that's no fun whatsoever and solo you saw when he went for the the pinfall oh Interesting. Yeah, trying to trying to dislocate that uh, that elbow of Aaron Solo. Solo was trying to do the right thing. He, the referee was breaking it, and then you know Nemeth took advantage of that, and now going after that arm. Yeah, just a, a small mental lapse there by by Solo. But you know, look, that's something you just do without even thinking. Put your hand on the top rope. Absolutely. Like that. No, you're right. That was very crafty of Nemeth. Inventive. Yeah, like he possibly could have sub blocks to uh, his shoulder. That's when you Smart. dislocate it and it pops back into the socket. I don't think it's hanging out of the socket, but. Possibly could have sub lost it there. I'll put more pressure on that on that left shoulder. Yeah, that hammerlock. And hammerlock and he does this here where he goes on, he does like a kind of shows his balance and pulls back on the arm with a hand a headstand. Is he showing off there, Taz, or is that actually uh, putting know, more pressure on the I on think the joint? Pressure and yep. the pressure. Because the first time I saw him do it uh, weeks ago, I thought he was just kind of you know showing off and whatnot. But I don't think so. The more I've watched him do it, he's definitely putting more pressure on the hammerlock. Mm. Are we going to see Cage do that tomorrow night on Dynamite? No, he'll just rip someone's arm off and beat him. Oh, ho, ho, just a fish drop there. Old school. All right, between the eyes. Hollywood Hulk. Just figured I'd point that out. Randomly. Irish whip into the corner. Zero points. 
All right, Nemeth. He's doing a very, he's, uh, he's showing the quads, I believe, uh, doing some kind of a. I thought he's doing the Pee Wee Herman tequila. Maybe he's doing, <laughs> I think that's exactly <laughs> You are correct. Shoulder to the midsection. Hooks the far leg, solo kicks out. Ryan Nemeth, I mean, you know, I mean, his cockiness, Anthony, I think, might be well deserved because he's, yeah. he's in the driver's seat here, man. Yeah, 100%. I'm not the fan. I'm not a fan of how he's going about his work, but what he's doing is very effective. I'm actually really impressed with him. He's performing really, really well today. Elbow to the mitts. Oh, man. Can't sleep on Solo, he, even though, you know, Nemeth pulled Lateral down. press here, one, two. Pulled him down by the hair. Solo is uh, tenacious, he's tough. Uh, he's got a lot of resiliency. We've seen that over him in his career. So you gotta stay on Solo if you are Ryan Nemeth. And Nemeth knows that. He's got the, got the hands clasped. He's got a good uh, S grip right there as he kind of has that real tight shin lock, almost turned into a, well, opposite side of a bulldog lock. Nope. Jarber got there by Solo. See, Solo. Ooh. Nice full on. Yeah, dodged, dodged the contact there, blocked the the lariat attempt. And Solo comes firing back with one of his own, two of his own here. Looking for the trifecta. And the Hollywood hunk in some trouble. As Aaron Solo charging in, upper cutting the corner. Ryan Nemeth. Oh, look at this. Oh, ho. Oh. Cesar Bononi and Peter Avalon coming out to, to get a look at Aaron Solo. Aaron Solo covers her one, two, no, Nemeth kicks out. Interesting, Avalon out. Well, oh, I guess this inning came close. Avalon and uh, Big Cesar Bononi, Cesar Bononi. Just scouting them. what's going well, on? Well, yeah, I, I said they were getting on to take a look at Solo, but I mean, they could be getting a closer look at the Hollywood hunk, too. I could see that being. He's uh, a hunk, Taz. Yeah, he's a hunk. He's a Hollywood. Hunk. I don't know if you've heard. Of him. Oh, oh, Hollywood, yeah. And that's going back to that work that uh, that Nemeth did on that sh uh, that elbow of Aaron Solo earlier. Get that hammerlock on again, and Solo able to get out. Oh, you showboat now. Oh, must nice kick. Corkscrew kick to the temple. Mm. It's never nice getting kicked or punched to the temple. It, it, it fuzzes you up, makes your legs go wobbly. And you did a funny dance. You saw Ryan Nemeth did the dance. He's on his, he's on his, well, flat on his, on his uh, front at the moment. Oh, or he was just luring Solo in. I am possum. Because now, oh, the neck breaker. One, two, three. There is your winner, the Hollywood Hulk, Ryan Nemeth. Well, Avalon looks very happy. Yeah, maybe he was scouting the hunk. Impressive performance from, from Ryan Nemeth. Oh, 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 wow, look oh. at this. Peter Avalon and Ryan Nemeth putting the boots to Aaron Solo. Wow. And you better hope it stays up and only don't get involved here. Very unexpected. Uh-oh. Oh, oh, speaking of that. He's got, he's got Solo all tied up in the pump handle. And we see the Nightmare family on, making boys. their way to the... Wow. I think, I think Cesar Bononi just... He was ready to face the, the odds, the three-on-one odds of the Nightmare family for a second. Yeah, Lee Johnson, QT Marshall, and Camarado so. coming out watching the back of uh, Aaron Solo. Well, Ryan Nemeth, the Hollywood hunk, victorious here tonight, but something tells me that this piece of business is far from over. Ladies, tag team action coming at you right now. Eva Lise and Diamante in action. This is a tag team contest set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring, the team of La Sicaria, Eva Lise and Diamante. Eva Lise and Diamante, one of the most formidable duos in the women's division here in all elite wrestling. They have proven time and time again just how tough they are. And their opponents, Miranda Alizé and Renee Michelle. Renee Michelle in the uh, black, the red hair is Alizé. And uh, 
Ted, I'm not sure if you know anything about the, the history here between Ivelisse Diamante and Miranda. I know, Miranda. listen, listen. I know everything, okay? But please enlighten us. No, I, no, 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 Ted. Listen, I, 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 I want to give you an opportunity no, to get I some don't, accolades I don't here. I have to do that. I, I'm already a made man. <laughs> Back elbow there by Ivelisse, but Renee Michelle not backing off. Side headlock. And, oh. There's Eva Lee stepping on the back of the knee. Her name is Shell cartwheeling over the top. It's a nice and, ball, really. Yeah, and that, that top wrist lock into that bridge. And great. Her name is Shell. Ooh, Eva Lee. Dirty strike that there. Was some shot for sure, dude. And Diamante tag in. A shot to the exposed ribs of Renee Michelle, courtesy of Diamante. Hey, Michelle, though, firing up. Repeated strikes there. Oh! I think Alizé tagged herself in. It looked like she got, got that, that tag. And comes over. A little bit of an arm drag there. Alizé ducks the contact. Casadora, a second arm drag, takes down Diamante. Swing and a miss by Diamante. Miranda Alizé, the Tierras. Steps over. Mahi Straw, one. Two, no. It has the, the history between Alizé, Ivelisse, and Diamante that I was alluding to earlier is that, uh, you know, in, informally, Miranda Alizé, part of a Las Sicarias, the, the, the team uh, that... Yes, Ivelisse, Diamante and Ivelisse. Yeah, yeah. and uh, we saw a couple weeks ago that uh, they were watching as uh, Miranda Alizé was Ooh. competing against Nyla Rose and, you know, Nyla just disappointed. Just, yeah, ate yeah. her alive, frankly. And Ivelisse and Diamante very disappointed, so. Could be interesting to see. I mean, it, cover here, one, two. You know how. In, yeah, they, they were uh, befriending with her and, and all with Alizé, but then, you know, because of the loss, they, they, you know, they don't like her. They don't respect her, and that's why they're beating the hell out of her. Yeah, but yeah, sometimes, you know, you, you, hit, your, you hit your friends harder than, than your enemies sometimes. Yeah. But no, it's true. I mean, it's just, you know. Left hands there from Diamante. Alizé was trying to make it over to the corner, tag in Renee Michelle. But Diamante doing a good job, slowing her opponent down, keeping her yeah. isolated in the center of the ring. Especially when you capture the hook, you, know, you hook the jaw of your opponent while you have an overhook on the arm. That's exactly what Diamante's doing. It's a great way to control your opponent. But. Diamante doing a good job of shutting down the offense of Miranda Alizé here. Oh, Alizé sent into the waiting boots well, of Ivelisse. To the point that you were just alluding to about the history. Now, Ivelisse and Diamante, they know Alizé so much better, so that's why they're singling her out and keeping her from Renee Michelle getting into this matchup too much because they don't they don't know Renee as much as they do Alizé. Yeah, uh, better uh, better understanding of their opponents, of Alizé's oh. strengths and weaknesses, and they are exploiting those weaknesses right now. Uh, ooh. Oh, man, Eva Lise and Diamante. They're physical, man. Diamante and Eva Lise, very, very physical. And they're, they're giving her a, a verbal... Uh, Verbal beat down as well. <laughs> they're mean, man. They, they, they're both mean and they're aggressive and tough. And ex shots. Yeah, exchange here in the center of the ring. Oh! Cutter there after uh, Diamante got spun out. Renee Michelle needs to make the tag. Yeah, Renee Michelle needs to get in this matchup for sure. Eva Lise tagged in, as is Renee Michelle. Michelle dishing out shots to both opponents. Renee Michelle. Oh, man. Eva Lise. A big. Oh! The kick. Wow. That, he, uh, that hook kick dropped Eva Lise. If it weren't for Diamante, I think Renee Michelle might have scored the victory here. She got all of that kick for sure. It was right on the money. Oh, Renee. oh. Wow. that dirty knee by Eva Lee staggered Renee Michelle. She was very unsteady, Taz. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, I guess I was wrong when I was saying about signaling out their, their friend, or former friend now. They, they got Renee Michelle in there, so they don't know her as well. <laughs> Beating the heck out of her. 
equal opportunity ass kickers. Yeah. At least in Diamante. Renee Michelle being brought towards center. Oh, escapes out the back door. Knocks down Eva Lease. Low bridge there. Nice leverage move. Yeah, Diamante spills to the outside. Nice by Renee Michelle. Both driving the, uh, Eva Lease's face to the mat. Yeah, both women with the same idea there, Taz. Renee Michelle making the making her way over to the corner. Tagged. Ooh, that was. Alize, yeah, she's yeah. tagged in. I, it was, it was a tag, but, oh, <laughs> Miranda Alizé. Whoa, things are, are really breaking. Yeah, oh, very personal situation here. Oh God, she's in trouble, Alizé. Oh, stereo knee strikes. And Alizé just planted flat. Rolled through and oh, wow! Eva Lise and Diamante She's done. One, two, three. Here are your winners: La Sicaria, Eva Lise, and Diamante. And the insults continue even after the bell, as Eva Lise and Diamante victorious here tonight. The young high-flying duo of top flight, Darius and Dante Martin in tag team action next here on AEW Dark. This is a tag team bout set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Introducing from Minneapolis, Minnesota, at a combined weight of 405 pounds, Darius and Dante Martin, top flight. Top flight, the coldest team in the game. Always great to see them in action here on AEW Dark. And it's yeah. Dante on the left, Darius on the right. Yeah, and if you're new to AEW programming and this young tag team called Top Flight, and you're watching Dark right now on your YouTubes, I'll tell you what, you're in for a, a really nice uh, treat. These two young guys can really do some impressive stuff. And their opponents at a combined weight of 445 pounds, a team of Tony Vega and Steven Stetson. Steven Stetson in a black hat, by the way. Oh, because of the cologne he's wearing, I see. Yeah, not the hat, it's the cologne. Yeah, I can smell the guy from here. Yeah, it's nice. He's all business, Mr. Stetson. That's, yeah, that's a steely gaze from Steven Stetson. Oh, good. Tony Vega and Darius Martin. Starting things off for their respective teams. Darius, the older brother of the uh, of Top Flight. And uh, Dante, only uh, 19 years of age. Yeah, even though bo both, you know, both of, the, of them, you know, they're young, young athletes for sure, but God, they really, uh, you know, you watch their in-ring abilities. It's, it doesn't show it at all. So to me, it's just a number. Yeah, well, uh, well experienced beyond their years. Right now, Tony Vega doing a good job of hanging with uh, Darius Martin, though. It's early goings, but yeah, top notch Tony Vega. Ooh, big back elbow there. That worked. It's impressed with himself, Vega. Deep arm drag, though. From Darius Martin, a second one. Snapping like arm drags, maybe a body slam here, yeah. Big scoop and a scoop. Oh. The boot's up from Vega, creating some distance. Smart grab yourself a headlock right away. I think Stetson might have got tagged in. Maybe not. Oh, backslide here. One, two. I think he reached for the tag, but just missed. I think you're right. And Darius tags in the younger brother, Dante. Mar oh. Guess we're going to see. Wow. Oh. We're going to see Dante Martin take flight. Drop kick there to Vega. Dante Martin sending Steven Stetson into the ropes. Leapfrog. Leapfrog again, and an arm drag. Stetson gets taken down. Yes, Stetson right now is nowhere to go with that strong arm bar. Steven Stetson, of course, big fan of the Bowl Championship Series. BCS, yeah, I know, that's true. He also, his trunks remind me of Cowboy Ron Bass. The outlaw, rolled him very high. Ooh! Knee to the back by Tony Vega. Oh, what a shot. Dante just threw an angry right hand. 
But that little bit of a delay, yet kind of. Allowed Stetson to hoist him up and drop him down. On, Good job by Stetson. So there was that opening. Really smart right there, Stetson. That's smart too, stepping on his leg yeah, while keep, you tag Vagrant. Keeping your opponent uh, towards your side of the ring. Well, you know, preventing him from getting over to tag his brother in. Yes, by keeping up, keeping your opponent towards your side. I understand what it meant, sir. Hang with me, Ted. <laughs> okay. Top flight is uh, is getting grounded here, Taz. Yeah, that's the thing that's, you have to do. That's a cliche for you. It, it is a cliche. Well, you're known for them. But anyway, yeah, no, that's what you want to do with top flight. You want to, you know, keep them, you want to beat them down, avoid them hitting the air, man. Once they get in the air, they all top flight. They fly around, and they're just ready to, you know, they have mad hops in those legs as the expression goes. Ground them. That's what we're seeing these two guys do to them. Steven Stetson controlling the head of Dante Martin. Yeah, Dante is getting double so fast here. Yeah. Yeah, they, they have done an, an excellent job. Cover here, Vega. Of Darius, I'm sorry, Darius on the apron is stewing, but he can't wait to get in here. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, you know, it's, it's always tough when you see your younger brother getting getting beaten down like this. Boot to the midsection there by Vega. Ooh, big elbow strikes. Physical shots. But that's, or excuse me, Vega shut him down with a knee to the midsection. Tony Vega, big, big fan of television. He has TV on his trucks. Yeah, he loves TV. I've heard it about him. Streaming, linear, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Watches it all. Apple. Oh, wait. Oh! Oh! Spine buster there. Yeah, Dante was, was trying to leap over Stetson. Stetson caught him. One, two. He caught him in midair and then just drove him down with that spine buster. Yeah, good hip movement right there to get him to his back. Clubbing like blow. Steven Stetson in control. Well, was for the moment. And now Darius tags in. Ooh, takes down Vega. Double boots to the face of Stetson. Ooh, here we go. Oh! Comes in with a hard clothesline. The double chops. I think he rocked, uh, I think he rocked yeah. him with that shot. Or perhaps Stetson was trying to play possum. Maybe, maybe. Oh, the ends of Gary. Stetson thought it was coming from the right side. He tried to get the hand up. You're right. But Darius caught him on the left. Damn near kicked his ear off. Darius Martin, shotgun drop, kick, one, two, no. Oh, he saw. Yeah, Darius was looking towards that corner, saw Vega coming in. Out of the corner of his eye, he spotted him. Inadvertently, Tony Vega dropped an elbow on his own partner. He's singling it out right now. Dante and Darius singling out Stetson. As Steven Stetson stuck in the corner of the assisted launching drop kick. Dante covers and picks up the victory. Now winners of this match, Darius and Dante Martin. Top fly. Well, Taz, top flight. Keeping the momentum up here in the tag team division. We've said it before, we'll say it again. I expect big things out of the Martin brothers this year. Check out this big eight-man tag team matchup focusing on Bad Country and Sonny Kiss and Joey Janela. This is an eight-man tag team match set for one fall with a 20-minute time limit. Approaching the ring at a combined weight of 604 pounds, Bear Boulder, Bear Bronson, Bear Country. Taz, know how much you love to visit Bear Country. Oh, yeah, I love going up to Bear Mountain. I hang out with uh, Bronson and Boulder all the time. You know, I mean, it's well documented. You can take a bobsled back down to the city. Yeah. Sure, just, you know, the, the way the weather's been, sure, why not, what the hell? Just take that thing down the, you know, New York State Thruway, I'm good. It's just zipping along like a crazy man. And their tag team partners at a combined weight of 391 pounds, the Concrete Rose, Sunny Kiss, and the Bad Boy, Joey Janela. 
right there is a Wagyu steak of asses. I know. <laughs> Here we go. George Nella, Sonny Kiss. About to be part of this eight man tag. They're teaming up with Bear Country. Interesting, uh, you know, Bear Country teaming with these two people. It, it, was, it was interesting the first time, but now it's becoming, uh, becoming a thing. Not, not for me, what I hear. So well, maybe for them. And their opponents, the team of Mbadu, Levi Shapiro, Dan Joseph, and Aaron Fry. Interesting uh, quadruplets here. Mbadu is uh, the guy that says Mbadu on the back is black and green trunks. Yes, it is. That's Bear Boulder. The guy in the uh, red boots, by the way, for those wondering, he's about to start this matchup. That's uh, Danny Joseph. He goes by Danny. Oh, well, he did Danny until he got, yeah, he no, got his, no, his, his life kicked out of him. His new name is No T. Jones. <laughs> <laughs> Tag out to That'll be a new Bronson. Real soon. That kid's boots are orange or red. Oh, boy. But his socks are definitely orange. Oh, 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 oh. his George. His nose must be broken. And Bear Country, man, they continue to impress every time we see him. Aaron Fry seeing his first action in the match, and he walked right into that high collar. Oh! Taz, you've been putting on clinics on Bear Mountain? No comment. <laughs> wow, it's a good suplex by uh, Big Bronson right there. Aaron Fry getting rocked there by Bronson, tagging out to Sonny Kiss. Sonny. Well, Sonny might be unorthodox, but Sonny is an insanely talented athlete. Let's see what happens here with Fry and Sonny. Uh, Sonny. Oh, drop saw. Yeah, drop nice. saw. And a single footed drop saw. I mean, that's the, so hard to do, dude, you know? Yeah. <laughs> well, as opposed yeah, to that. One, right? two. Just a split on top of someone. It's just crazy flexibility. Uh, Sonny Kiss, maybe, you know, if you put a, a top five athletes in AEW, Sonny Kiss, I think, be on that list. Yeah. <laughs> Janela going for a drop down, and he did. Double hip toss there by Kiss and Janella. Aaron Fry getting rolled through, driven into the outstretched knee of Sonny Kiss. And Janella, oh! Nothing fancy about it, Taz, just a shove, but it got the job done. You're yeah, not kidding. And Janella's so impressed with himself and with Sonny Kiss. Sonny Kiss is an impressive athlete. I'm not point that out. Yes, now Shapiro. Eli Shapiro seeing his first action. Joe Janella. Ooh! Right hand across the jaw. Oh, Hero, interesting. Kind of reminds me of Ron Shaw from back in the day. Shapiro incoming. Oh, there comes Dan, Danny Joseph. Dan Joseph. Oh, what a chop. Come on, get in, get in, get in. So, <laughs> Because <laughs> Aaron Fry now He's getting all over Janela. Oh, the big man, Mbadu! Love Mbadu. It's Cobb, I know you're a big fan also of Mbadu. And this is an athlete you got to be very careful of. Janela's in trouble, old man, with a squisher right there. Mbadu. Mbadu. Sorry, I just. <laughs> I know. Whenever Ron Shaw's name comes up, you get very emotional. People realize that. I'm sorry. Oh, what a shot! Shapiro rolls up Janela. <laughs> I'm not sure. Oh, oh! I, I'm not sure if he made the tag to Daniel Joseph or not. But Joey Janela taking out three members of the opposition out on the uh, the apron. Oh, well, Shapiro went for a big shot, but nobody there. And look at this rip choke by Janela on the ropes. Janella coming out. German suplex plant Shapiro on the high on the shoulders. Janella makes the roll, tags in Bronson. Oh, big clothesline. Yeah, big powerful clotheslines. And Mbadu dropped down to the apron as Aaron Fry. Oh man. Oh. There, Bronson. It's a wrecking ball here, man. Big Uranagi there. Boot to the midsection now. Daniel Joseph. Oh! And oh! 
Oh, the sandwiching sent on. What? Watch out, oh, Mbadu. This, uh, this quartet of Bear Country, Janela and Sonny, has done a great job of keeping Mbadu out of the action, really neutralizing his power. I mean, I think he's, he's the most known threat for his uh, his team here. Oh, you're right, I, I agree. And this, so oh, this oh. can't be good. Oh, no. Joey Janela. Joey Janela. Crashing down on all four of his opponents on the outside. Levi Shapiro he returned underneath the bottom rope. He's very unsteady. Sonny Kiss. Great. Or Conrana, Joey Janela. Hoist him up. Death Valley driver spiked him center of the ring. Shapiro driven right on the back of his head. And Bear Country. Oh, we've seen them do this before, Taz. Uh-oh. Yeah, this is uh this is the beginning of the end of the end of the end. Covers two, three. Here are your winners, Sunny Kiss, Joey Chanella, and Bear Country. Taz, I mean, one victory is a fluke, but Bear Country and Joey Janella, I mean, they have proved to be a pretty formidable quartet here. It's a very interesting uh, four-person team. I never think to put these four athletes together, but it works. I mean, nobody would have think, thought to put uh, Joey and, and Sonny together, and, but, right? True. Their uh, their differences are what make them great, Taz. Yeah, no, no doubt. Hey, a victory is a victory. It's that simple, my friend. Hello. Pretty Peter Avalon and Cesar Bononi will be in action next here on AEW Dark, taking on Ryzen and Baron Black. The following tag team contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Introducing at a combined weight of 441 pounds, the team of Pretty Peter Avalon and Cesar Bononi. Taz, whose music you like better, Avalon's or Jungle Boy's? Oh, that's a close one. I, 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 I actually, man, I don't know, that's a tough question. Probably the toughest question I've ever been asked my whole life. Maybe not my whole life. I'm gonna go. It's a, it's a real Sophie's Choice. For Jungle Boy's music, but I do love the Avalon too. But I'm a jazzy fan, you know, I love jazz, cool jazz, watercolors, that's my thing. And their opponents at a combined weight of 422 pounds, a team of Ryzen and Baron Black. I love a good alto sax that's chirping along like we're hearing. That's not a tenor, that's an alto sax. Oh, a little bit of yeah, friend of Russell keyboard play. You know, scat along. It's my style, bro. I go to jazz clubs all the time. My new door, my cigars, everything. Crazy bastard. Cesar Benoni starting things off for his team, Baron Black. Impressive look at this guy, yeah. Monster, right? Baron Black, though, quick step getting behind Cesar Bononi, but Bononi just relying entirely on his power there. He's impressive, but like snap man here. Cesar hits the ropes, takes Baron Black off his feet. Baron Black, not a small man. No, no, not at all. And to get bounced around like that by Cesar Bononi. But Bononi is just, a, yes, some kind of a big, athletic, fast specimen. And now, this is another type of specimen, Peter Avalon, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, Peter Avalon and Cesar Bononi, we saw earlier tonight uh, coming out, joining, uh, finding an alliance with Ryan Nemeth and attacking Aaron Solo of the Nightmare family. Right now, I'll tell you what, getting all Peter Avalon's getting all tied up. And, and Ryzen taunting, uh, taunting Peter from the outside. One, two, no. Avalon kicks out. Yeah, yeah Ryzen's at the range, fella, on the apron. From Hell's Gate, Florida. Uh, yes. Right? Yes, he is. Hell's Gate. Yeah. yeah. Hell, Hellgate. But Please, yeah, well, yeah, I mean, you'll get letters. Gate. You'll get letters, Taz. Well, no, but it's, it's just trying the, to save you. It's the next county. I was off the county. It's Hell's Gate County. It's Hellgate's the city. Hell's Gate Gates. is the county. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Right outside right of Ocala. Just south of Clark. Clark County, Florida. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Boynton Beach. I don't know where we 
Peter Avalon getting worked over here by Ryzen. Ryzen! Northern Light Suplex! No. Never seen a guy do a bridge that was straight. It was a straight bridge. It's not, it's not even a bridge, but the Northern Lights went over well and he almost got a win. Jacksonville, the city of bridges. Oh, the take within Matthews Bridge. And the firm Schnabitz as well. That's right. Ooh, Avalon sent hard into the corner. Oh! Ryzen colliding with them. Avalon, man, really unsteady here. Ryzen with the advantage. Avalon's definitely hurting. Ryzen's got control in the city of Bridges. Oh! <laughs> right in the face. The rugged good looks of Peter Avalon. Ryzen. Ryzen cut the promo on him. We, 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 we've had a lot of looks at Ryzen here on AEW Dark. And, you know, we have fun sometimes, but he's really a tough competitor. I have no fun. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Avalon with the close line and the, the cross chops knocking Baron Black off the apron. Tags out to Cesar Bononi. Good control by Peter Avalon. Cesar Bononi played uh, American football in his native Brazil. Mm. <laughs> Did you have a nice submarine sandwich? No. <laughs> One, two. I'm sitting here in Jersey Mike, stop listening to you, bro. I mean, I, 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 I'm a conversationalist. You know I am. Mm. You say something, I'm, I'm dialed in. Bro. Oh, and Cesar, we've seen oh! it. Use that inverted body slam. Crazy, dude. Holden rising open for the drop kicks from Peter Avalon. One, two, no. You know, that inverted body slam is super hard to do, but if you're tall and have those long limbs like Benoni has, you can pull it off because it's, as you know, as a guy wrestled, right, your, your body is... Your opponent's body's floppy when you grab them in a reverse body slam. Well, if you have those long arms, it helps. And, and you're, you're bending them against right. the, the direction of their spine. The body has a natural inclination to, to pull forward. Yeah, like a fish out of water, like a guppy. Or any, any type of fish, too. Any fish. Salmon. Yeah, I have nothing against all the fishes. I'm just saying, you know, guppy people, most common folk know what that is. What's your favorite fish, Taz? I'm a salmon fan. Oh, to eat? Just in general. Oh, barracuda. I like, a, I like a nice tuna. Well, I like to eat tuna, but I like the song Barracuda and the fish. But anyway, uh, Bononi. What would you like first, the song or the fish? The song. Ooh, Bononi. That's a single bicep flex by Peter Avalon. Who, why, why, why flex both if you only need one? Oh, the man has no ass. He don't care. <laughs> Peter Avalon in control now. Ryzen, though, reverses, sends Avalon hard into the corner. There's nobody there. Ryzen, Ryzen he's, looking for, he's looking for Baron Black. Uh, nobody there. Baron Black still collecting oh, himself. Ryzen, oh, oh. nobody home. Second rope moves, so nobody there. Peter Avalon, second rope. No, oh. nobody home that time. Avalon oh. land right on his yam bag. Both oh. of them are just one of them. The whole unit. I think he's in a lot of plethora of pain. He's grabbing his whole area. Peter Avalon desperately needs to make the tag, but Baron Black came in and rocked Cesar. Yeah, Baron Black, he is really cooking here. Avalon through the clothesline. Baron! Manhattan drop, exploder. Baron Black looking impressive. Blocks the Lariat attempt. Ooh! Cesar Bononi charging in. That was smart for Baron Black. Just get out of the way. Great combination shot there from Ryzen and Baron. Baron Black coming. Oh, ran right into the back elbow there. Peter Avalon. Swing and a miss by Avalon. Oh! Atomic drop. Oh. And the backstabber. One, two, no. Very close. And Baron Black. Floated over immediately after the kick out. He's got the cross, flate, cross face locked in. Cesar Bononi was trying to break it up. Oh, he got goozled. Ryzen got goozled. Oh, good Lord. And Baron Black just had his own partner thrown on top of him to break up the pinfall. Thanks for coming, Ryzen. What is going on? Oh, oh look. Oh, <laughs> Martinez. One, two, Three, whether Peter Avalon liked it or not, he's gonna hit the martinis. The winners of this watch. match, the team of Cesar Bononi and Pretty Peter Avalon. Well, speaking of pretty, that was not a pretty finish, but it worked. Avalon doesn't even know what happened.
I don't know what happened. But I know what, these guys are victorious. What happened was the power of Cesar Pannoni was on display. First, the choke slam God. onto Baron Black, and then. He's <laughs> <laughs> more like a white Russian. <laughs> Get it? He's actually Lithuanian. Oh, well, uh, yeah. All right. All right. Cesar Pannoni and pretty Peter Avalon victorious here tonight on Dark. This should be an awesome women's contest coming up right now. Tasha Price goes up against Kylie King. This contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Making her way to the ring from Chelsea, Michigan, Tasha Price. Tasha Price making her return to action here tonight on AEW Dark. Looked impressive oh, in yeah. the past. Still seeking out that first victory in AEW. And her opponent from Painesville, Ohio, Kylan King. The King, Kylan King. Also back in action here tonight on Dark. Got a little, uh, a little artwork on her face, Taz. Yeah, that's kind of what people do now. They throw some kind of, uh, you know, makeup paint. It's a big thing now these days. 21. Yeah. Interesting that uh, she's going horizontal with it. A lot of people here in AEW go vertical. Yeah. You're, you're Dustin Rhodes, you're Thunder Rosas, you're, you're Darby Allens. Well, Sting is a painted face punk. Random. But Tesha Price, I will tell you, as is King, they're both very impressive. Tasha doing some kind of a funky dance. But Tasha uh, loaded with exuberance, as you know. Believe that Girl has such a high, yes, I can. The funky chicken. Oh, that's what that was. But she has a very high energy type of uh, young lady, Tasha Price. Where Kylan King is more of like, I'm gonna rip your head off and hurt you type person, see? Funky chicken is actually what happens if you leave it out on the counter too long. Yeah, it's, you, get, uh, you have bathroom issues. <laughs> Salmonella. Sal or Manella, right. Kylan King in control of the wrist of Tasha Price here. Tasha Price, you could see, uh, well, she was she was reaching for the hand. Instead, rolls through, flips out, lands on her feet. And now Tasha Price in control of the wrist of Kylan King. And King has that a big height advantage over just about every lady she faces. Yeah, I think Kylan King, definitely the, the, the tallest competitor here in the women's division of AEW. I think you're right. I think she definitely is. She has the, the headlock. She's like probably 6'1", so she's like an inch taller than me, so, you know. Okay. Head scissors there by Tesha Price. That's not funny, but all right. Side, <laughs> side headlock by the Kylan King. Which you could, yeah, it's keeping a tight grip on there. Tesha Price tried to throw her off, but Kylan King doubling down, really wrenching in. Tesha Price fighting out, showing that toughness. She's got a lot of toughness, that girl. Oh, big shoulder tackle, though. Drops Price to the canvas. Tesha. Tesha goes for the trip. And whoa, whoa. Nice arm drag, man. Really well done. Kylan King anticipated it. As soon as Tesha Price got up to her feet, Kylan was there with that arm drag, now maintaining control of the left arm. I didn't see it. I didn't see it. Tesha, you want to quit? Tesha Price. Deep arm bar right there. Really high up under the armpit area. I would like to see King bring that arm bar down a teeny bit. You want to be right over the elbow joint. Maybe not as much as she is. But just be nitpicking. She, she did a little pose, but then did you see that frown afterwards? Yeah, she got a little, she's, there's, she's got a certain energy about her price, she does. Ooh, oh, kick to the ribs, just dropped her, and then the boot across the jaw, Kylan King covers, one, two, no. Good opportunity here if you're, you know, King, you just now keep that, keep your offense going on Tasha Price, because you got her rocking right now. Tasha. Oh, she to get the ropes, break the hold. Tasha Price up kicking off her back. Oh, dropped toe hold there. She's got Kylan King hung out dry over the center strand. The referee counting, calling for the break. Tasha Price. Lining her up, lining her up. Ooh, punch on top of the head. <laughs> right hand to the side of the skull. Man, that was some shot. One, two. Two count only. Punch the top of a head. I don't think I've ever seen that. Tesha Price 
That was pretty cool. Now, one, another right hand being delivered. Frank Gasno making a, giving her the business. But Tesha Price giving Kylan King the business cover here. Mm. Get away from me! Yes, leave her alone, Frank. Tesha Price cutting a, cutting a promo on the referee here. Yes, well, she doesn't want anyone near her, Tesha Price. I understand this. And when she's wrestling, leave her alone. She's got personal space issues. Yes, I understand. I'm the same way. I get it. Odd choice of uh, vocation. Oh! <laughs> Diving back elbow. Yeah! As Tasha Price screaming. Charging. Oh, the kick. The cartwheel into the kick. Kylan King gets dropped down. Tasha Price hooks the far leg. Just a two count, though. God, she's just. She's incensed. She's. <laughs> Look at those eyes, man. It's like cold blue eyes. She just, she's pissed that she didn't get the win here. I, I think it's the most intense we've seen her as of late, to be honest. Yeah, and this is, I mean, this is, I think, the sharpest she's looked as well. So maybe this, uh, this intensity is really what I, she needed. I like the pissed off Tasha Price. Kylan King sent into the ropes. Catches. All the way slam. Opportunity here for Kylan King. Yeah, but can King, you know, can she follow up here? That's the, that's the question. Can King capitalize? Same thing as follow up, but I got it. I was going for the alliteration. Boy. Big for my britches to have. <laughs> <laughs> pressure. Oh! Charged right into that one. Kylan King blocks the Larry to attempt, hits the roundhouse kick. Kylan King, waist lock, German, suplex one, two, no. Tasha Price able to kick out. Landed hard with the German suplex. Kylan King was looking for that, uh, that Kingdom Falls, but instead, ooh, Tasha Price went for the heel kick. Caught her with the, the roundhouse one, two, no. Kylan King able to break out of it. And she's got Tesha Price hooked up. Oh, just threw her into the oh. ropes. Big running shot, just decked Tesha Price. Kylan King hoists her up and drives her down. One, two, three. There is your winner, Kylan King. Kylan King. Looking impressive in victory here tonight. You came. Yeah, it's a hard, hard hitting matchup for sure. A lot of intensity over here. Yeah, it was a hard hitting matchup, but at the end of the night, Kylan King has her arm raised. Did you see how hard Bryce landed right there in the face. Watch here, flip the right to right to a face, maybe a forward area hit, part of her cheek. And she hooked both legs, but Taz, I'm not sure she even needed it. Yeah, no, you're right. Kylan King. Intense. Well, we got coming up right now, a little tag team action. SCU is in action. This is a three-way tag team match set for one fall with a 20-minute time limit. Approaching the ring at a combined weight of 335 pounds, the team of Mike and Matt Seidel. Taz, Matt, and Mike Seidel looked very impressive last Wednesday on Dynamite, though. They didn't pick up the win. They still showed us a lot. Oh yeah, no, I, I, listen, uh, I, I think this brother team is uh, tremendous for sure. They bring a ton of talent, experience, they get it done. See right there, Mike Seidel, a big yoga enthusiast like myself. I'm a big yoga He's the guy. yoga monster. Oh yeah, I'm the yoga <laughs> sensei. Namaste, brother. Next at a combined weight of 377 pounds, on a helicopter, Jack Evans, the hybrid two. You're, you're a yoga monster, you said you? Uh, no, I said Mike Seidel is a yoga monster. Oh, he is. I'm, I'm not. I'm a baby monster. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. <laughs> I don't either. Just, I just, I'm not as good as him. 
I, mean, I, I, I haven't seen my abs since 81. So. <laughs> This side though, brothers getting ready on the outside, as in Helico and Evans getting a ring, and they do their crazy dance with their bright green and great dancing. They are just yeah, smooth, bro. I'm telling you, TH2 for for as as unorthodox as they are, they are extremely effective as a tag team. Speaking of effective tag teams from Southern California, at a combined weight of 425 pounds, the fallen angel Christopher Daniels. Frankie Kazarian, SCU. As SCU has been extremely, extremely impressive as of late. And it all goes back to, uh, to Frankie Kazarian putting that pressure on his team. The next time Daniels and Kazarian lose, they will not be teaming together ever again. Yeah, and, and you know, we've talked about that a lot with Kazarian and Daniels. You know, when you put that pressure on, and Kazarian's the one who did that, right? So, you know, and, and at first, if you remember, Chris Daniels was a little bit taken aback, if I remember correctly, um, because he was a little bit like, well, why are we going to put that kind of pressure or whatever? But it, it worked because they've been successful. Yeah, that pressure this creates diamonds. Now, this is a little bit different situation, though, because it's a free team tag. So let's say, hypothetically, SCU doesn't win. I don't think they have to break up. It's not a regular tag match. I, you know what? I, I mean, I think this is not an AEW stipulation. This is uh, an SCU stipulation. So I guess it would be open for interpretation, and I guess we'll have to find out what happens here tonight. Damn, brother, you should have been a lawyer. <laughs> I got a pretty good one, so. Collar and elbow tie up here. Yeah. Mike Seidel bringing Jack Evans down and up in the cravat. Went for a snap mare out of the cravat, but now, uh, Evans able to handstand up and now got control here real quick. Whoa, she's gonna handstand. Mike Seidel with the cartwheel avoiding contact. Now two consecutive arm drags slowing down Jack Evans. Interesting to note that, Ev oh, look at here, roll up here. One, two, just a two count. Uh, Interesting to note that Mike Seidel, Jack Evans, and Matt Seidel all spent a lot of time in Dragon Gate Pro Wrestling. Japan. One another. Yeah. And uh, then Matt Seidel, Christopher Daniels. Oh, cover here. Two. Uh, Matt Seidel and Christopher Daniels also were uh, tag team champions in Ring of Honor and then spent a lot of time in New Japan Pro Wrestling together. So a lot of, uh, a lot of common knowledge between yeah. Many well, of these competitors. I, I, I'll give you two words that I live by: connective tissue. A lot of connective tissue between these uh, these athletes. How yeah. about that, brother? Great way okay. to put it, Taz. And yeah, that'll be trending once this airs. If you go back to uh, to the beginning of Angelico's career, he trained uh, extensively with uh, Ultimo Dragon, Negro Navarro. Ultimo and Negro Navarro were uh, crucial in. Uh, the, the development of the uh, the first generation of Dragon Gate, or I guess at that time, Torimon wrestlers in Mexico. So a lot of connective tissue here tonight, Taz. So now I guess on Dynamite, you'll steal that and use connective tissue like you took area code shot, but I digress. Hey, you um, know what? That was an homage, it wasn't theft. Irish whip into the ropes, reversed by Christopher Daniels. Daniels yeah, yeah. drops that helico down. And uh, Frankie Kazarian, who's a, a little bit of the, the odd man out in terms of connective tissue in this matchup. But he has a lot of history with Daniels and the diving stomp to the spine. Well, you, you know how Kaz is. He just wants to beat somebody's head and he don't care about anything. He wants to rip your tissue out of your body. That's what he wants to do. He, he don't care who's friends with who, who knew each other, who trained in Japan or wrestled in Japan or Mexico. He don't care. He just wants to go. And uh, you have to remember back to when Kazarian put that that uh, that pressure on SCU. They were in the midst of a of a couple match series with TH2 with the Hyper Two Evans and Angelico, and things weren't really going their way. But as soon as Kazarian put that pressure on, SCU able to turn it around as he just turned it around on Matt Seidel right there. Yeah, it was nice using, uh, using the ropes through that flip right there. Nice fireman carry into right through Kazarian. Yeah, it gets. Seidel rolled up, Seidel pushes off, catches the clothesline here, rolls Kazarian through into a crucifix, one, two, no! Kazarian able to break free. Oh! Well, you gotta slow down Matt Seidel, and that's exactly what Kaz did there with that kick. Oh, but that leg lariat, the heel of Seidel's boot caught Frank Kazarian on the side of the head. You saw Kazarian try to turn his face to avoid contact, but Seidel 
just so dangerous with those feet. He really is. And we've talked about that with Matt Seidel from his Mac game. Has he, he's evolved his Mac game over the years from his high flying, his kicks. Look at that stomp by Mike Seidel. And Mike Seidel and Frank Kazarian, the legal men here in this match. Standing, Moonsault press, good tuck there, covers. Just a two count. I mean, you know, the, the similarities, it's, it's, it's not often that brother teams have the exact similar style. I mean, let's, let's, like, there's a lot, like the Young Bucks, they obviously have a very similar style to each other and their success. But I think the Seidel's are in that same vein as far as same style of double, uh, double Russian leg sweep right there was pretty badass by the brothers. Yeah, Taz, I think to your point, if, if you're uh, using the, oh, the slice there by Seidel and the standing Mariposa crashing down on Kazarian. Hooks the far leg. Just a two count. And to, to your point, to use the Young Bucks as a, as a contrast to the Seidel brothers, you know, you have Matt who, Matt Jackson, who's a little bit more of the power wrestler. Nick Jackson's a little more speed and agility based, where Matt and Mike Seidel, both very, uh, very similar. Matt yeah. Seidel, you know, has a tendency maybe to use a little more ground submission holds, but right. both love the high flying. Yeah, they do, and they both have obviously extreme uh, similar physicality and athleticism. But right now, SCU's got control over Matt Seidel. Oh, what a kick. Rising Common Geary and the Manhattan drop. Look at CD, look at CD. Great crossbody uh, leg sweep, total elimination style combo. Very nearly got the victory right there. The veteran Chris Daniels doesn't get too frustrated, realize they missed it. Gets a little pissed and keeps on rolling. That's what young wrestlers should watch. Watch a guy like a Daniels. He doesn't lose his pool because he didn't get the win. Daniels keeping the pressure on Matt Seidel. I mentioned that uh, Seidel, Matt Seidel and Christopher Daniels were champions together before as a tag team. So a lot of shared history between these two. They know each other so well, but Daniels was not able to anticipate that leg lariat. And now here comes Mike Seidel quickly in, and oh, Evans gets dropped. Yeah, uh, Jack Evans tagged in Chris, uh, from Christopher Daniels. And Mike Seidel sent into the ropes. Evans elevates over the top, but Mike Seidel elevates with that drop kick. Yeah, great explosion in the core of the body, middle of the body, his flexibility, all that yoga he does. Covers here. No. He was, he was deemed a yoga monster by Excalibur. I heard it. <laughs> and I'm a, I'm a monster baby, Yoga Jones. Oh, watch out. Oh, wow. <laughs> what the hell? Hanging on to that top rope. That was very nearly disastrous for Mike Seidel. Cartwheels over. But Angelico right there. Look at this just yeah. coming into the ring and starts bludgeoning Mike Seidel. You're not kidding. I'll tell you, that Mike Seidel, very, like, kind of an un unorthodox, unorthodox style at times. But there was nothing unorthodox about Angelico beating the hell out of the back of his head with those elbow strikes. Yeah, I think Angelico losing his temper, uh, temper a little bit on the outside and just coming in hot and laying in some heavy hands to the head of Mike Seidel. Drops him down right there. Covers two. And you see that toughness out of Mike Seidel, and you hear Matt, he's trying to encourage his brother to get over there to get him in. He knows his brother's in trouble. He knows that Mike's in trouble. Matt is aware of that. And Alico grabs the front chantry, backs himself up to the corner, allowing Evans to tag in and keep the pressure on Mike Seidel. I mean, even though TH2 are not brothers and SCU are not brothers, all the years and all over the world, those two teams tag him. They're damn near brothers anyway. Yeah, cover here by Evans. And yeah, I mean, that's the thing, Taz. You, you, yeah. you go on the road with somebody for long enough, you're on the same right. plane, the same car, for sure. same hotel, Training. hours and hours and hours. Training again, and you know, and we both know this, because you know, we work for this company, for AW. Uh, these, these two teams we're speaking of, they are close, they are good friends, meaning TH2 and SCU. They are very good friends, and they, they, a lot of teams are not good friends. I've had tag team partners that hated me and I hated them, believe it or not. <laughs> I believe, it, I believe it, Tazza. I believe it. And Helico maintaining control of the legs of. Oh wow! Look at this crossing the ankles between his calves. Oh, oh God. man! Jeez! And and Helico, he doesn't have to do anything. All of the pressure is on Mike Seidel right here. And Daniels just had enough of it. Not gonna let him. I mean, it's, it's this is sudden victory. Whoever gets the first pinfall submission, that team wins. Yeah, and to your earlier point, Taz, how about uh, if 
and Helico forced Mike Seidel to tap out there, would SCU be forced to disband? You know, they weren't Well, that's beaten. the thing. That's, that needs to be brought up to the commission. <laughs> <laughs> or, or to Daniels and Kazarian. Right, or we just ask Tony Khan, one or the other. <laughs> Assistant 450, no. Evans rolled through Mike Seidel. Goes under, tags out to his brother, and Matt comes in. The high kicks, dropping Evans and Angelico. Yeah, Went for that knee oh. strike, but caught him on the backside with the heel. That was that is a knee strike again. That was great by Matt Seidel. The scoop. And, oh, drove him down. Hooks him deep. No, Angelico there to break it up. Good job to save Evans. Did Angelico very good. And you see SCU, they're watching from the apron. They are keeping their eyes locked in because they're going to try. They want to get into this match. Yeah, you saw Daniels maybe thinking about making a blind tag there. Yeah. Oh! Jack Evans just got rocked, and so did Angelico. But Angelico escapes, sweeps out the ankles, and taking oh. SCU off the corner. Smart thing to very allow smart. Jack Evans to put the submission hold on. Yeah, very smart version of like a Moodle lock he has. Oh, oh, a kick right to the face. God. Defenseless. Jackknife cover. Evans. Here we go. Evans with the jackknife, but only a two count there. That was real smart. You're right. Of ex of, I'm sorry, of Angelico knocking SCU off the apron. Because they cannot make, they could not have made that save. Oh, Kazarian right there made the blind tag. Oh, I don't think did. TH2 realizes it. I didn't realize it. I'm glad you caught oh! it. Glad you caught it. I didn't see it. Oh! <laughs> man, oh, Thunderous man. Thunderous kick there by Angelico. Oh, speaking of kicks and a split. Mike. Look at that. Yeah, Mike Seidel really stepped into it, but the Blue Thunder, the thunder bomb, bomb there by Christopher yeah. Daniels. The Meteora by Mike, or Matt Seidel. Watch out! Corkscrew kick from Evans. Seidel got blasted by Evans now. Kazarian gets out of the way. Wait a minute, brings him back in now. Oh! Brought him back in the hard way, hit the cutter. Covers, hooks him deep. And a toe, and Helico. Great job by Frank. Making break. Sorry, great job by Frankie Kazarian. Almost got the win right there. That was, that was excellent. And Helico sent to the, oh! Ooh. I think uh, he didn't he didn't want to get brought in like Evans did, so he's trying to go through the middle. Kazarian right. anticipated it, and Daniels hits the Arabian Moonsault. And the Seidel's got rid of Kazarian, and now Evans drop kicks both Mike and Matt Seidel. Swing and a miss there by the Seidel brothers. Oh, Tope Suicida! Oh, jeez. Oh, but Daniels, I think Daniels was able to counter it, and he sent Mike Seidel crashing into the barricade. Jack Evans. Ooh. Oh! Wow. Great timing oh, there this, by Christopher this. Daniels. Reverse DDT. Kazarian covers. Three. SCU. No winners of this match. SCU. Huge. Well, Excalibur, I guess it's a, a moot point. You know, what would happen if TH2 or the Seidel's won the match? What would happen to SU? Would they have to break up? No matter. <laughs> SU was the victors. SCU will continue as a team here in all elite wrestling. And Taz, they looked impressive. I mean, they are the most experienced team, but that's not to say that any of these other teams were you know, significantly less experienced. I think just SCU a little bit sharper here tonight. I, I think there was more, I think you nailed it what you just said, but I think there was also more pressure that these two men put on themselves. Well, thank you everyone for joining us here tonight on AEW Dark. Tomorrow night, 8, 7 central on TNT. It will be AEW Dynamite. We have a great night of action in store for you. So thank you once again for joining us. Good night, everybody.